Hello, hello everyone, and welcome. I hope you guys are having a great day, and I hope today is about to get a little bit better, because today, the tournament qualifiers for the next Fort's official tournament are starting. So, as expected, we are going to be sitting on here with a one minute delay. Not much chat interaction, but some of the best content you can find on this side of the internet. So welcome one, welcome all. And uh, let's jump right into it, shall we? And by jump into it, I mean, let us start with the cat herding. Hello there, Salzburg. I will, I, I need to actually, I need to actually learn how to pronounce that correctly. Oh. For those who are unfamiliar with Salzburg. Uh, he is one of the casters for the German community, so if you guys are looking to uh, enjoy this con content in the native German tongue, go check him out on Twitch. But for now, let's go ahead and unmute, or rather, join the call, as today we will be today we will be joined by Barbaretto, Knight Sinclair, and Nosehead for today's cast. Let's do this. Hello there. Hello. Hello. Welcome, welcome. All right, so before we get off to official introductions, I will wait for Barbaretto to, uh, to finish off with his starting up of his stream. I believe we have some of the, uh, the German casters are here as well, yes? Uh, yes, we do. Saul's work is is going to be casting a uh, German uh, cast of the tournament. Excellent. So that will be that will be available on Twitch. Is Geiger also streaming? Geiger often streams at least his perspective. Uh, do we know? Yes, I believe Geiger is cast. I'm just reading what's uh, being chatted about uh, in the. In the chat here and yes it sounds like geiger's gonna stream the first game excellent so plenty of perspectives for anyone who wishes to see i think the uh the cat herding is going to be fairly real this time around uh because this is a 2v2 yeah i and had three teams try to enter in the last uh 20 minutes uh i'm redoing the uh, name list now oh <laughs> Well, that's uh, sounds good. That's exciting. Yeah. There's that's also good. Polish as well, so I'm being told, informed on chat. Oh. We'll Excellent. have to check that out. Yay, variety! <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, hello, Bob, and welcome. It looks like the gang is all here. Everyone is ready to go. Looks like it. So let's see, for our first competitors, we have, I should actually use, we have the bracket command for those who are interested in seeing the bracket for themselves. Yes. I'm actually going to use that in my chat so I can get a quick link. So I forgot to pull that up. Yeah. <laughs> Salzburg is a participant today, so Geigen is. is casting. Okay. Yes. So, uh, Rome is going to be just doing a quick shuffle of the bracket, because some, right. there's some late additions to the teams. Uh, so we, we'll just give him a couple minutes there to uh, deal with that. All sure right. thing. Well, the more the merrier. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we had a lot of a lot of teams show up today. Very exciting. I know. It's I, I like seeing I saw that there were a fair few newer names as well, names that I didn't recognize, yes. and that makes me excited. Indeed. Uh let's see. Alright, so if we're doing a shuffle of the of the bracket. Um, 
it, does that mean we're going to have a different round one? Then the players are already. It's entirely in possible. I'll, I'll I'll leave it to uh, Rome to tell us who. I think who the bracket can stay the same, but I had to update the mod name list now. Okay. Oh, I okay. see. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. So I will set the teams appropriately here. All right. There we go. <laughs> Zelsberg says he'll be casting with Geiger later when Donkey Mushko bursts us. Oh no. <laughs> well, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how that turns out. Yes, best of luck to everybody involved. Indeed. A lot of the teams here, are, like, like you said, unknown, but we have a few familiar faces here looking to squeeze into the tournament next weekend. Speaking of familiar faces, today I am joined by Barbaretto, my fellow co-commentator, and we have a, a, few, a few other characters in the voice call today. We have our fan favorite, it's Nosehead. Say hello. hello. There we <laughs> are. And we're joined by Romero. Romero, recent, a relatively recent addition to the Forts community, to the, or rather, to the Forts team. Romero. Hello, everyone. I am no longer the newest member, however. Yes. <laughs> we have a, an, an even newer member. It's Knight Sinclair. Hello. Hello. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I'm hoping someone new is going to rise to the top today. Oh, we always have that hope. But yeah. deep down inside, we know what's going to happen to them. Because Sad uh, truth. <laughs> yes. Eaton, he comes for the badges. <laughs> yeah. He does. And he and gets, them, gets them all. He usually gets them too. Yeah. yeah. He's so consistent. <laughs> yes. You never know. You might have a cold. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and as always well luckily for the new players today there's Eaton will not be participating alongside the other winners from previous 2v2 tournaments they will be they already have buy-ins to the uh, tournament next week for the finals yes as these uh, are the tournament qualifiers the uh, weeding out phase for the proper tournament coming next week yes that's right we just have too many participants. We have to have a qualifier now, and I'm excited about that, actually. Yes. Yeah, well, it's good. It, it, yeah, it, it, it just opens it up to more people, gives gives newcomers a chance to to prove their skill, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, and gives us an opportunity opportunity to have another another stream and and uh, and show off some really cool gameplay. Oh yeah. Oh yes, exactly. <laughs> See in chat many people asking why is quick cover on there twice why is eats it on there like three times uh because Bam. they're good at the game that's why yes that's right and so they win the tournaments again and again and they aren't the only names on there multiple times mm. yes a few of them from the previous ones are just team names so i believe yes. trek jeff is on there a few times uh he was he was very good. He was. I miss him. Yeah. <laughs> I think he just uh got bored of it. I haven't seen him come back for a while, so Yes, after a, a long time. Might have uh, to ping all these guys and ha get them to have like a a battle of past champions type thing. Oh, <laughs> battle of amazing. nostalgia. Yeah. Champion of the champions. Oh, things have changed very much since, uh... On all stars. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, uh, the, the strategies have evolved over the five years of forts, so... I would assume that the, uh, more recent guys are probably going to be tough to beat compared to, mm. you know, the quicks, quicks cover days. Unless probably. they're not used to an old strategy, you 
they throw in something, you know, they're not used to. Mm. Yeah, uh, the angled mortars. Mm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you say that, but last time, literally, oh, no. Eaton brought out the angled mortars for last year. That's true. With the uh, the portals, they work yeah. very well. I was, I, yeah. I love that. That's still my favorite. That is still my favorite. I like oh, that yeah. one. Portals. Damn you, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so cat herding update. We have the players here. I believe the map we're starting on. Is there anything that we're missing aside from, well, we're gonna set up the mod by the mod. I, yeah, mean. I, need the observer I just tools. need to identify the, uh, I believe knows you asked for a different um, fork of the observer tools to move the commander portraits. Oh, uh, I, yeah, right. Did we do, um, don't need I'm just that making sure we around. select the just making sure we correct the uh excuse me select the correct one okay uh we don't need the ones that where they were shifted up because we don't have that part of the graphics this time around yeah okay in that case we should change back to the other one then I'm afraid so uh, is that okay. gonna slow us down All right, I will let you guys clear that up. The technological cat hurting. Surprise. <laughs> There's always something of the sort going on. Oh yeah. And we are definitely testing in production today, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, uh, a fair bit of changes to our usual pattern this time around. Mm. Uh, can you suggest the mod again, Romero? Hurting cats to an unlikely victory. Someone's gotta win. Very true. Speaking of winners, the top five places. I uh, found a places. bug. I uh, can't what? select the check mark for the suggested tool because it's running off the screen. The name for it is too long, and it's outside the box. <gasps> oh, oh no. geez. No. Uh oh, oh. the humanity. <clears throat> uh. <laughs> Manually through Steam. Uh, Let's see. Panic. Okay, just let me edit that. One more <laughs> <laughs> Rename the mod so we can select it. <laughs> That's, uh, well, some players were able to download it, so maybe it's just my, my specific it graphic seems size. It for me. Wait. Did that work for me? Nope. But yes, as I was saying, the top five place uh, place teams in the qualifiers will be moving on to go to the tournament next week to face off against the teams who have already qualified. Uh, those teams being uh, Team Seep with Eton and Mateo. Oh god, these names are... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Volmageddon with Kronknader and Felix. And the Sussels, Alex and Firework. Um, so those three teams are already qualified. Uh, plus the five that will end up qualifying today makes eight for the tournament next week. Maybe we can talk about how how did they qualify? Like what was uh, what was A uh, the, yeah? What was that? That was the um, Forts Pro League, wasn't it? Yes, hosted by uh, Relo Flex g very generously for the uh, past two seasons. Um, he did a very good job. Uh, ran a very well uh, tight ship. Mm. He was very good at organizing tournaments. I think he's been sucked into New World recently. <laughs> the Vortex. Jeff Bezos. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, oh, but yeah, so it's, uh, I guess what we'll do is we're going to probably um, um, try to maintain that pro league to some degree so that uh, we can keep track of everybody's uh, achievement. Uh, all the teams and their uh, team ranks and stuff. So, um, yes. Hopefully, and I'm obviously, you know, by doing this, uh, you know, we're 
seemingly getting more teams and more players involved, which is great. So yep. um, Reliflex uh, doesn't have time necessarily to maintain it, um, but uh, we'll we'll try and maintain it ourselves and keep it going, which is kind of cool. Yes. It will live on. <laughs> it will live on. But yeah, those those um, those two v two matches were very fun to uh, just watch the mm -hmm. players evolve over the over the few weeks leading up to the finals. Yeah, very interesting matches to watch and cast. That's for sure. Very fun to play in as well. Um, the first season I played with Mateo, we uh, we ended up uh, winning, which is very nice. Oh, a little badge for that. That's right. I forgot about that. Added yes. to my trophy cabinet there. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> yes, I remember doing the uh, doing the casts for those and the replay. Those are some very very good matches. Oh yeah, uh, playing them was mortifying, but you know, <laughs> yeah, as always. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like wait, this is this is so good, so many players. The oh, strategies, yeah. I feel like the uh, the Forts Pro League, it's forced a measure of strategies that um you don't typically see in the tournaments in these tournaments it's very it's it's like the strategies can be very secretive it's you know you're only going to be playing one or two games against your opponent so you don't have to have some extremely efficient tactic you can cheese them twice in a row and win and most yeah. of the time that seems to be what we have happened so it's these these matches that are very quick, very decisive, and shall we say unexpected, perhaps unexpectable. But for the Forts Pro League, there were matches going on all the time. And the cheesy strategies, they got used, they got figured out, and they got solidified. Mm. And how to defend against them. So you didn't see all that many. Instead, you had these sometimes unusual tactics... But most of the time, it was tactics that uh, that were well refined and optimized to a degree that you just didn't see outside of the Forts Pro mm. League. Mm. It was definitely a two v two strategy renaissance of sorts. That's great. It was uh, it was very enjoyable. Mm. Although, of course, me being me, didn't really want to practice the new <laughs> the new strategies, and I was just like, Mateo, you you just tell me what to do. You just you tell me what to do. <laughs> Listening to him didn't seem to work out. <laughs> okay, I'll just need space in the lobby so I can suggest got it. the uh, tools. You got sure. it. Yeah, you can. There's a slot available now. I can hear a lot of meowing in the tournament team's chat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're all herded alright yeah. so we need the standard observer tools and the mod the additional mod or just the, the mod. yes we have a uh, plethora of maps as well so all of the maps all of the 2v2 maps from scratch uh, including the moonshot ones so nice pretty pretty backgrounds we get to look at watching nuclear reactors explode and <laughs> Mm. Turbines get shotgunned. Is that? It... That's the same. What? Oh what? What happened? What changed? I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm actually confused now. Is it showing up the same on your screen as yes. it was before? Yes. Yes, it is. Oh god, the tense music started playing when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet down, Spotify. Okay, let's Here, see. I'll post. Um, there's a. There you can see what I see. If you notice, there is a check mark there all the way on the right off the screen. And it's uh, unclickable. Okay, I see. It's retaining the same. I'm just going to re upload it as a completely different mod. Okay, uh, works. whatever works. I mean, it could also could be shared in the chat, so Incursus could just directly download it mm -hmm. through the workshop. 
I feel like I'm the only one suffering from this problem, and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I was able to download it. I mean, I'm not complaining, but... Let's see. Hmm. We'll take note of this and add it to the bug list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is something the... I've never seen before. Yeah, I wouldn't... Of all of the things I would expect to go wrong, this is not one of them. Yeah. You know. Maybe it's a dedicated host <laughs> issue? That could Maybe. be possible. Yeah, that would be the the thing that's slightly different this time around. One thing I notice is the mod name is long enough to wrap around to the next to the next line of text, and the check yes. mark is actually just in the middle of the name because the check mark is at the end of the first line, not the second line where the end of the mod name is. Right. We like to test our competitors uh, not only on thoughts but on uh, different things like patience. Yeah, <laughs> but yes. usually, usually we're the ones waiting for them. That's true. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is this is <laughs> unprecedented. A little bit of payback. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all an elaborate plan. Yeah, we're the cats now. <laughs> yeah. Good lord. Okay, I've put. I believe that is the mod. I put a link to the mod in the chat. No, Bob, no, I'm replacing it with a completely different one now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that and if I mind. download it from Steam, I have to restart for it in order to get it to update. Uh, that would probably Steam. be the case. Yeah. <laughs> right. and well, we have to go through Tuesday. the... <laughs> That's true. Yeah, no, I have to go... We have to do it through the lobby or have to restart for it, which, to be fair, at this point would be faster than... Uh, all of this, but would have to remake the lobby and everything. What is it? The uh, I saw some players in chat or some chatters asking, how can they join the tournaments? No said, why don't you give us a rundown of how these tournaments are run and who, who can you talk to? How do you go about joining the qualifiers for next time. Um, well, basically, they uh, contact um, Romero and would tell us they want to play. And sorry, I'm just clicking on something here. Uh, they give us uh, a valid team name, not something dodgy. Uh, and uh, I, ideally, if they make it through the qualifiers, they would give us a, an avatar as well, so they have a nice team logo and yeah then they have to go through the qualifiers and if they can get to the top i guess we're going with the top five of this one um yes. they can get into the tournament uh which happens the following week um and so we started advertising this a couple weeks ago and yep yeah, the and although we just had a, a couple of last uh, minute additions um I think we're going to actually increase the cutoff to because we had the cutoff up to 15 minutes before the tournament but that is clearly not enough time for us to get everything ready <laughs> so um uh i think we're going to make it so you have to have you, you can't join the tournament um you need to uh, uh to do it within an hour of the tournament starting mm. but yeah but we might uh, also change registration to a bit earlier too in the past we we did actually struggle sometimes to get participants for these tournaments but now um that's since that's no longer the case we're actually having qualifiers we can probably set an earlier uh, registration limit yep yeah yep. very true these these qualifiers are a bit more a bit more uh free form yeah i would say <laughs> so, but still important nonetheless are we ready we must be getting close to ready right i think so i'm just switching back to the computer that um I have sound on, uh, yeah. but the other okay. <laughs> I was editing the file on the other computer. I'm just I'm fr <laughs> the man in the chair. Yeah. I have another computer where I have sight on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right. We're almost almost there. There he is. Okay. And I believe we're ready now. Yes. I just need to be observer. We yep. finally downloaded a mod. <laughs> hey, we did yeah, it. We got there in the end. 
Okay, oh, so we've got, got the right map, we've got the time limit, we've got the observer tools, the names, I guess, are set up, I'm assuming. <clears throat> and... If all goes well, I have no confidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and Cursus, I think you have to turn me up a little bit. Uh, I have done so. I can do it a little bit more. I will usually be doing adjusting throughout. I can turn myself up on a few other things as well. All right. I believe we are ready to go. Uh, like people are downloading, downloading, downloading the mod. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And if I could just explain the bracket for a quick moment. Yep. Uh, the reason we have some uh, placeholder teams is just to ensure that everyone plays in the first round and that you don't have a, a first round buy that would affect who gets to qualify. It will affect the uh, who gets the top seed for the next tournament, but we figured it was more important to determine, you know, give everyone a chance to qualify first. Okay. Yes. So the name Test Dummies was not in short supply. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People didn't just suddenly liking that one. All right. So we're off to round one. Yes. Let's get everyone ready. Competitors. We're cleared to go. Oh. Ah, uh, yes. That. <laughs> that was important. Luckily, there's no mods for those. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we will have... Commander well, bans time. Yep. Donka has to go and tell us there who they ban. Scattershot. And so we Very have the Scattershot band. And yes, just to be clear, but whatever commanders are banned, both teams will be not uh, will be unable to use those. Mm -hmm. All right, King. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Curious. All righty. So either team is unable to use Hurricane or Scattershot, which means Pinch Fist. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, it's Maybe funny there's still hope. True. I feel like that's why sometimes players don't ban Pinch Fist because they want to use Pinch Fist. It's like a mutual agreement. Damn. This is a Pinch Fist match. Yeah. <laughs> they have to have okay. the greed. Uh, to Rome, are we good from your point of view? I'll, I'll Cross his fingers, I'll... yes. Yep, okay. <laughs> cool. Alrighty. Um, I think we're good to go, guys. All Looks right. like it. Oh, wait. 15 minute. Uh... I didn't start that. Oh, okay. I just readied up. Interesting. Uh, Should I go back? I believe we're good to go, anyways. Okay, I can let so. this go. Time's up. Let's do this. All right, then, on the left side, we have our Team 1 players. It is Finn and Embrulo. A combo that we've seen many times before. These are some very experienced players that also have experience working with each other, facing off against yes. their opponents on the right-hand side. It's Sonic and Ewart. These are names that I'm not familiar with, and I'm curious to see how they're going to stack up against uh, our two more experienced players. Yeah, I am unfamiliar with team... Uh, oh god, Crispy? I'm, I'm gonna go with Crispy. <laughs> it looks like yeah, in both the... Unknown so far. Yes, so... I'm liking Team 1's strategy. This is a strategy that we've seen a fair few times before. Where one player goes for missiles, and the other player goes for more heavier weapons. We're going to see 
we're going to see some heavy weapons coming out of their top base. Namely, the laser technology. So we're going to see the fire beam, the plasma beam. I imagine we're going to see the fire beam, plasma beam combo. In part because their forward base is going for swarm missiles. Swarm missiles and I imagine eventually a nuke for the uh, extra explosive power. This will enable some early game pressure. And specifically pressure in a way that is augmented by the, by the fire beam. Yes, the fire beam additionally will also be able to uh, block any AA from the, the incoming missiles from from bottom player here. On team yes. One. Now, it is important to note, the swarm missiles are, have been revealed. They're exposed. Team 2 has the opportunity to know about them, uh, but hasn't reacted accordingly. Hmm. So these Team 2 may simply not be scouting. They may not be looking at what their opponents are doing. And that could cost them dearly. And by dearly, I mean most of their base. Yes, especially on this map, the mines are initially exposed, so they are weak to, I mean, really anything. Um, so things like swarm missiles early can do a lot of economic, uh, economic damage early on, which is not good for the remaining receiving team. Absolutely. First missile launch here. So it's just going straight for the core. I mean, why not? Straight for the money, yeah. Oh, both getting upgraded to nukes instantaneously. That's terrifying. Oh yeah. <laughs> to me, that says Team One is uh, Team One is getting, shall we say, a little bit greedy with this. This is we are not respecting you. We are going to blow you up. <laughs> and you're not going to stop us because we don't think you can stop us. Yes, trading constant damage for just the big final, the final blow. Yes. The, Honestly, the I, th I think there's two things that Team 2 had to do in order to get this kind of response out of Finn and Brulo. They had to first not build anti-air, as in they didn't preemptively build anti-air to deal with the exposed swarm missiles and second uh they didn't defend their cores any it's not until after they got hit where they added a small layer of metal or small layer of wood and that isn't going to save them if those two nukes lands at the front of team two's lower base that's just that's game ending right there oh yeah and so team one is just saying hey they're still vulnerable, and they haven't reacted appropriately. Let's just end it. Sure, this is the riskier play, but why not? And look, they, Team 2 hasn't done anything to stop the Fire Beam Plaza Beam. They're about to get slammed. Yeah, the um, those those missiles are, are prepared. So they're going to be able to kind of go full force here, especially with that AP Sniper uh, plucking off the single door flak yeah this is going oh. to be rough oh, oh that's uh -oh. going to be some overkill yep oh, yeah. yes very oh, overkill really, <laughs> <laughs> the nukes <laughs> four ball well uh rip team two's lower base uh we saw that was ewart 51 eliminated in an unnecessary brutal fashion Let's see. So I think at this point it's a race to see. Does Finn or Ambrulo get the uh, eliminating shot of the final remaining player? Does have some flak. Uh, that might save him from a nuke. Yes. It does. Oh. The fire beam is a bit too Ooh. late. But the idea is there. Looks like the sniper is going to take vengeance. There it is. Mm -hmm. yep. No more Good flak. Shot. Luckily for Team 2 here, he did not sell the armory, so um, they're still able to place Flak down. I mean, yes. Missiles of his own. Although he has not, has not uh, decided oh. to yet. See that? He used the uh, <laughs> he tried. defensive laser. Jeez. Oh. And... Down to 53. Oh. It's his, this is uh, quite brutal. Here comes the nuke, and Ooh. there's the finish. Jeez. 
GG. Decisive. And very yes. decisive. Oh, yeah. 625. Oh, team one selling off. Yes. <laughs> As is oh, traditional. <laughs> GG, GG. All right. And that was round one going to Finn and Embrulo. Yes, moving on to round two. And up next we have Team Eaton's Coaches and Laser Eyes. <laughs> oh my. Eaton's Coaches. Yes. Eaton's Coaches, uh, consisting of Salzwerk, the German fourth streamer, who I believe will be uh, joining Geiger and the cast later on today. And we have uh, Stefan as his, his uh, teammate. Interesting. For Team Laser Eyes, we have uh, Genger. Looks like Geiger, but I think it's a different person. <laughs> and uh, he's joined by Gzaps, who is a familiar face here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, um, Sonic can we switch does the need mod, to... the time limit mod? Yes. We want it to ah. be 15. There we go. Welcome, Stefan and Salzvark. The time limit is 15. There we go. Looks like they're having some technical difficulties with their internet, which always bodes well. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. At least they're not trying to download a mod. <laughs> Eaton says that they are, in fact, not his coaches. That would be oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. No relation. For being Eaton's coaches, uh, they seem to do <laughs> seem to do pretty well, perform well. I have to see how they go in uh, round two. Curious. All right, Gengar has arrived. So it turns out, if I ready up, I I it starts the battle. <laughs> yes. So, so uh, <clears throat> please give us a little bit of warning, or at least we'll let you do yeah. the countdown. Uh, that is different yeah. from uh, that is... from previous previous go arounds. Um, not sure what changed. I think dedicated mode needs a little bit of a rework. Yes, I think you're right. I think it was just on the assumption that I was the host in that situation. Yes, which is. And, uh, uh, Curious. Mm. Our uh, team's correct. It's just about to look. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have Eaton's coaches, so Salzwerk yep. and his teammate Stefan on team one. Ah, so uh, Stefan yep. needs to be put. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Fine with Stefan on my team. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Three versus one. Uh, and the new map, I believe, will have uh, Team 1 can ban first. Mm -hmm. Ah, Abyss 2v2. Very nice. Let's go. All right. Team 1 bans Scattershot. Just waiting for Team 2 here to respond. And then we'll have both commanders banned. Ah, Spook. All right, so we have Scattershot and Spook banned for this match here, which means uh, it rhymes with Pinch Fist. <laughs> All right, well, looks like Scattershot and Spook. Yes. I'm not surprised to see Spook banned. Spook is just so good and so much fun. Very good. 
especially with the um, the FPL, the a lot of a lot of commanders were banned for each match on uh, on those. So you could it wasn't just uh, two commanders banned; it was a majority of them. So mm -hmm. Spook oh, was right. up there in the remainder for uh, choices. Very good Indeed. in two v twos. Lots of players got a lot of practice with them as well. Oh yeah, she's a very good all around all round character. Uh, just stealing stealing stuff is good. <laughs> I love waiting. It's a lot of the, a lot of the players will fire their energy weapons when they have exactly the energy they need. Because why would you have extra energy when you're actually trying to, you know, use your weapons? I love waiting for someone to do a fire beam plaza beam combo, and then wait for them to fire their plaza beam and just drain their energy and cut off their plaza beam oh. halfway through. It's oh, yeah. beautiful. It's just a good yoink. Surprise. <laughs> yoink. Your energy is now mine. Um, uh, so, I think we might be ready. It looks like it. Indeed. Okay. Everyone is good. We have the new map. All right. Let's do this. Three, two, one. Let's go. And right. we're off. On the left side, we have Team 1, E10's coaches, consisting of Stefan and Salzwerk. And on the right-hand side, we have uh, Team Laser Eyes, Xaps, and Gengar. This is a map that See? I thoroughly enjoy. It's a little bit oh, yeah. difficult to keep your eye on the opponents at all times, just because of the um, sheer verticality of it all. But mechanically it's quite enjoyable to play there's a uh, there's a degree of the, the verticality of it and the ability to crawl up and down the walls means that they're just the, the strategies that you can employ are wild you can do things like go all the way to the bottom and plop mortars down there you can put, you can crawl all the way to the top and drop some snipers and just rain snipers from space. You can even get, I'm, this is something players love to do. You can even sneak a swarm missile down, down way down at the bottom of the uh, the bottom base, mm. and have that sucker come from the depths. It is amazing. Oh, yeah. Low down nukes are very painful. They are extremely difficult to deal with too. Yeah. Just to clear them out. Most gunners in these more professional scenes are uh, typically used in trenches, so they have a limited angle, uh, either up or down, just to uh, not get shot and use metal for the doors, um, which have their upsides and downsides, of course. Bit of a sniper battle there. <laughs> and they trade. One sniper fewer for each team. Looks like everyone, except for one person, went workshop here. Buzz saws on this map are... Uh, very favored. Um, although scattershot is banned, I believe. So no, none of that extra shot or extra projectile for the for the buzz saws there. Indeed. Very powerful buff. Very scary. <laughs> for those wondering, the reasons buzz saws are so popular on this map is buzz saws are great at chopping through wood. And how do you get from one part to another of this map? Uh, you build using wood. Yep. So they, uh, the buzz saws are the top tier weapon for r disconnecting the enemy's forts from all of its constituent pieces. Yes, it looks like what we were talking about happening before is happening. We have a swarm missile from Team One here, uh, just below, next to that lower mine. Yep. That will typically. Like that oh. Indeed. Oh. Going right under the <laughs> core. Very close. That can cause some deformation there. Some cheeky reactor damage. Ooh. I think more likely just trying to be annoying. <sighs> it's possible that an object was placed behind the core that it could have destroyed by destroying the brace from underneath. True. This swarm missile is launched. I don't think he's going for any real damage here. Just some superficial damage on the turbines. Probably yeah. scouting. Just to be annoying, say, hey, stop ignoring me. I have yes, swarm the, missiles. Uh, the, I'm dangerous, I promise. 
the targeting laser from the swarm missiles and nukes are very, very good uh, scouting weapons. If there's background bracing and you want to know what's in there, and you can usually pretty easily find out just by the uh, the space of the outline. I love and hate doing that because it is such a very good scouting tool. But oh, yeah. in by by doing so, you're announcing, "Hey, I have swarm missiles and a sniper who's just kind of exposed, looking at you." Hmm. It tells them exactly where it is too. Oh, interesting. We have the swarms getting upgraded into a nuke here. And then we have mortars as well. There is an upgrade center, so uh, those will most likely become uh, heavy mortars. This right Ooh, here, Sal's work is doing, is my favorite strategy for this particular map. Mortars from above, nukes from below, and snipers in between. Oh, yeah. Shotguns on this map, very nice, because just because of the vertical aspect, building turbines in one row to protect it with one uh, one shield is usually pretty difficult. So having shotguns to take out the exposed turbines is very, very economically uh, positive trade. Yes, you can see here a perfect example. We have three turbines in a row and slots where there were additional turbines, past tense. Mm. The heavy but now that they have released. had to invest in a shield, it's going to be harder to uh, build more gunners to kill the incoming mortars now. Indeed. Yeah, shotguns are shotguns are very fun. Very good pressure weapon. Oh. Interestingly enough, uh, Team Two has gone where has gone a strategy where both players are going for heavy weapons. Their top mm. player for cannons, their lower player for the lasers and energy weapons. Um, team mm. one's just going to try to kill them. No. Yeah, they uh, they need to. They probably at this point know that they're going heavy weapons and know that they have a limited time before they uh, come online. Yes. And I, oh, we have an active. Ooh. Let's see. That's going to be cheaper firing, Ooh. enabling team two to fire their weapons without using all of their reserves. Oh. The top players having such a rough time. I'm surprised to see they aren't focusing their fire. As much as I realize that the top player is effectively dead and bottom player is the only threat, I'm still. Oh! oh. oh Warthog active the laser. That was extremely Very. close. For those who are unfamiliar, the Warthog active increases the damage output of heavy weapons such as that laser. So that laser went way deeper than Salzburg was expecting oh, it to uh -oh. go. Oh. The nuke lands. Yeah. Massive Jeez, damage on the core. Down to 27%. <laughs> Yikes. Bottom player, despite having a weapon, oh. is in a rough position. Sounds very, nice, uh, very nice shot. Loses two of his mortars. Hmm. Wonder if he should have shot that at the core or if he would have just got held up by the armor. It would have been held up by the armor. Uh oh. Oh. Six percent. Six percent. The saving grace, Gengar here has sold off his weapon. He knew he was unable to defend it, and in doing so, he's able to uh, refill his metal reserves and defend himself just a little bit better to try to stay in this game. He's still out of money, uh, but he would absolutely <laughs> yes. have been dead if he didn't sell off his goodies. Mm. It does look like Selzwerk has his batteries in an interesting uh, position. If that laser did survive, um, it probably would have been able to do some structural damage. Those... That's it. That's the end of that guy. Gengar, Gengar. removed. He's... He's doing well on the defense, it's just the splash damage. It's too yeah. much. Yeah, the, the splash damage from the nukes is... Oof. Zaps here... Ah, uh, it's... I mean... It's too, it's too little too late. Yep. Mm. He took too much damage in the shotguns. He's got a cannon now, but it's not enough. <laughs> Very <laughs> much. Sure. Uh, to be fair, to be fair, they did get out a plasma laser, and the plasma laser very nearly evened the uh, evened it out. Very nearly. Oh yeah. They did. They have defended for almost ten minutes now, too. Yes. Um, almost a five-minute mark, but this will. Oh. Yep. And there's the end. An explosive ending. GG.
and team one takes the victory. Very well played. But yeah, so Sal's work, uh, Sal's work and his teammate, Stefan, will move on to fight Danky Merkel in round two. Excellent. And I believe up next we are skipping uh, those target dummy ones will be uh, skipped over, correct? Correct. Okay. That's my understanding of it. Yes, those are just buys. Yes. So then up next we have Copium XD, <laughs> consisting of uh, of Noah and Mech, two familiar faces here. And then we have <laughs> Team Fleck 2. I believe those are unfamiliar faces but we'll have to see how they uh how they perform yes those are players from the russian side of the world which is yes. exciting what was it the uh a couple of tournaments ago we had a huge influx of players from the chinese corner and mm. they had such such different tactics it was actually just super enjoyable to watch just to see how they played and it was, I like it. I'm excited to see how these players come out because these are these are fairly new players. Um, so I, I genuinely don't know what to expect from them. Uh, it could be just that they are inexperienced to get curb stomped. Uh, it could be that they have some new strategies that we haven't seen before. And I'm super excited for it. Oh yeah, for sure. You, uh, you heard it here, folks. We have cultural diffusion in, in forts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I, actually, I've been contacted by a few uh, Chinese um, uh, content creators, um, and uh, they were sharing me, like, their... Uh, in, in China, they have a, their equivalent of YouTube, which appears to be called Billy Billy, and um, uh, there's, you know, thousands of... Of followers on their on their channels and you know hundreds of forts videos and they, the fort seems to be really quite active in china which is awesome yes um, awesome to see and as you say yeah their techniques are quite different and they make these uh the modders and map makers make these crazy complicated maps that they're all sharing and stuff it's it's really cool to see I love one of the names. His name is Romero Lover. <laughs> it's perfect. It's beautiful. There's a joke going on chat. Uh, so for those who haven't followed many of the other content creators here in the Forts community, Noah just came off of a 24 hour live stream, which, you know, to each their own. Um, I, I'm convinced that is a mistake, especially if you intend to be participating in a tournament or qualifiers any amount of hours afterward. Um, but <laughs> I, I repeatedly joined his stream under or joined his matches under different names just to mess with them because I can't, as someone with badges, I can't actually hide, but I can change my name and my badges will still be attached to the name. So I'll join and be like, oh, look at these badges appearing. And then I just immediately leave. And so Noah was like, wait, who is that? He's like one of 50 people I had to have known because he's got badges, but I didn't <laughs> recognize the name. It was great. Watch uh, it. It was great. He's just like, he's like having a mental breakdown trying to figure out what was going on. 20, 24 hours of forts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's impressive. That's, that's impressive. some endurance for sure. Yeah. Maybe he's now in like some sort of like uh, zone, you know, that's like past, you know, human consciousness <laughs> <laughs> at this point. Yeah. All he knows is forts. All he yep. can see is so hallucinating <laughs> forts. He's transcended humanity. If I play a game long enough, I tend to dream in that game at night. Hmm. He, well, for sure he will be. <laughs> <laughs> Are they arguing? 
I think there is a uh, language barrier. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I caused him anguish I... for an hour, a full hour. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, that's mission funny. accomplished. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that was beautiful. I I was I was having fun with that one. All right, so the little bit of a language barrier happening. Uh, we will we will resolve this and move on in a moment. Are they Polish, right? That's what they were saying. Yes. I spoke incorrectly. They were Polish, not Russian. About that. Oh my! Test dummies one and two. Moving on. <laughs> Surprise! Crazy matches. <laughs> We'll have to see which test dummy is the best. Uh, what's going on with Noah? He said he wanted to. Game crashed? I'm not sure. Interesting. Uh... Okay, so it looks like Pinch Fist and Eagle Eye is banned. Interesting. I haven't seen Eagle Eye get banned in a... quite some time. I don't think I've ever seen Eagle Eye banned. <laughs> I mean, I've seen Eagle Eye used sometimes. But no but, one's ever afraid enough. <laughs> yeah. Who did we see at the last tournament and make a surprise appearance as a commander choice? Was it like Architect or something like that? And it was like used with with a good effect? Architect, Architect? yes. Architect. Architect was very good. Architect... Yeah was a surprise in the context. Like, Architect is a good commander, and there's things you can do with mm. it. It was just the aggressive... It was a close quarters map, and we expected some exceptional aggression. And for that, Architect is definitely not your uh, your first choice. But mm. basically, the strategy is... I remember this one, because this one caught me off guard. Their strategy was to just face tank using yep. wood spam, mm. and they successfully yep. face tanked all of the warheads that were slamming into them and then yep. they just activated their commander ability and burst them down with heavy weapons i was like that's something you don't see ever but it worked extremely mm. well and you know what i'm happy for it yeah that was cool so yeah, they definitely uh streamlined her went very uh, well we are ready i believe right i think okay. so all right then all right. here we all go right. three two one Let's do this. And we're off. Okay. Right. So here on the left hand side, we have Noah and Mech 70. These are players that we have seen many many a time uh can we pause we can pause look at the ping there oh i didn't pull it up in time darn okay we may need to do that every so often to see how is see how the internet comes out if there's an in unstable connection sometimes it may take just a moment to let their uh, computers catch up and then once we unpause, it should be all caught up and it should be good for at least a while. Usually how that works. All right. Okay, then. Interesting. It seems going some odd commanders here. Well, maybe not odd, but uh, some well, not banned commanders. <laughs> we have uh, Seep on the left side. Uh, so they will be going for missiles as we already see. 
uh, the mass missiles is very strong uh, with CP. They're going for the exact uh, same build, which makes me very happy to watch, as they as they oh, do yeah. everything in unison. <laughs> Even selling off the and technology then... at the same time. Whereas on the opposite side, uh, we have it looks to be a kind of sort of similar strategy overall. Swarm missiles out of one player. Oh no, cannons. So mm, it'll be cannons as a second player. Yeah. Uh, for mm. this position, usually you will see a missile support. We'll get because of the closeness of the uh, of the bases and well how small everything is usually we'll see one player go armory to do missile support or to do support for the missile player who just goes nuke rush uh, so I was kind of surprised to see a cannon facility cannon production facility placed here as I don't expect that to pay off or to survive long enough Team 1 definitely going to attempt to exterminate Team 2 here before that cannon even constructs. Yes. As the game goes further and further, uh, missiles become less and less potent. Um, so they're going to need the element of surprise, which they are about to have. The perfect sink. Oh my go. god. The perfect <gasps> sink. Oh, wow. oh my gosh. That's just it. <laughs> wow. Two and a half I'm minutes. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> yeah, Looks he like hit... Have. He hit his he spiked to he spiked to uh eight hundred ping for Oops. a moment there. I, guess. I think his Wi Fi is having a bit of issues. But oof. Oh boy. Yeah, so yes. that's um that's about what I expected to happen. Surprisingly, the cannon production facility will actually complete and he has the money to place the cannon. I Only two swarms are active now. Uh, both are being upgraded to. The other mm -hmm. two are being upgraded to nukes. But they still want to do some. Some damage. Oh! Hitting oh. the cannon. <laughs> yeah, it was oh, the cannon. <laughs> I, um, I don't think there's going to be much anything either players can do here to, uh, mm. to save them. The cannon timing yeah, was we can see he's timing. He's spiking to he spiked to twenty thousand millisecond ah. lag there. Ping. That's uh, he's got some consistency issues with his internet, which is very un unfortunate. Mm. It's only the one sadness. Let's see. <laughs> the swarm's just going right over the top. I'm not touching the core yet. Oof. Oh, it looks like he's Here come the nukes for the end. Bit, but the nukes, uh oh, the nukes are coming in with the nine percent core damage. Oh, there it is. And they topple oh, their the oh, There we go. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> such a good bug. <laughs> uh. Oh, jeez. And there we go. Team <laughs> two one. <laughs> so I do feel bad for their I do feel bad for their first player. Um he he did get a little bit a little bit uh I'm going to say I don't want to say unfair because you know obviously mm -hmm. all the players like you can't you can't just use the internet connectivity as as metric every time or all the time like we, we we understand going into it that if you have issues we can help when we can pause but it just hurts to see because he did get affected by it i think the only reason why i wouldn't try to say rematch or something of the sort was just because that was going to be extremely one-sided in either way he experienced yep. the lag spike as his base was dying like it was already yeah. too late yeah, it I just <laughs> it still it still hurts my soul to see. Yes. That was a beautiful salvo of swarms. That was. I've never seen it in such perfect unison before. Mm. Yeah, the target painted at the same exact time. Very nice. Alrighty. Uh, but very well played. Uh, <laughs> yes. 
looks like uh, Copium XD is <laughs> God moving on. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so we've had a a team uh, forfeit. Oh. All right. So which one? Team Dimu forfeits, and okay. that means Wild Chicks progresses. All right. To round two. So for our next match, right. we have a bye. Interesting. Yes. So up next, filling the last uh, s last slot in, or second to last slot in round two, will be the Toxic Tryhards and, oh god, Terrianos. Yep. Ter uh, that looks good enough. At least no one's team name is Epitome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mean Epitome? Uh, yes. <laughs> I've never... I I mean, I'm blaming it on the fact I've never seen that word written out before anywhere. Uh, rarely happens, Wait. but... <laughs> really? I've never seen Epitome written out anywhere. I, uh, okay. Like, that was the first time I've seen that word, like, typed out. I know how to say right. it, but I just don't... I didn't know. I have the opposite effect, where I read things and then never speak them, so I have just an entire dictionary of words that i know the definitions of and i can yeah. use i just don't know how they're pronounced and i'm a little bit gun shy about saying words sometimes <laughs> Makes I, sense. I, I grew up dyslexic so i would read things wrong so i always thought fatigue because i'd be playing like uh like some games when i was younger and i always thought f fatigue was fatigue for the longest period of time <laughs> Oh gosh! I you see, I I I hate to laugh at that because that's me oh, just should. all the time. It's but it's funny. Yeah. It's it's oh, yeah, still funny. just funny. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got horror stories as well of other <laughs> ones. I used to like sell to to customers a wine which was called Aficionado, mm -hmm. and I read it as Africanado, <laughs> and I sold it for a year before oh. someone was like, "That's not Africanado. That's Aficionado." <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh well, I just stared into the void <laughs> <laughs> on the uh on the bright side now i know i know how to know how to spell uh epitome <laughs> every time <laughs> every time i know how to spell it now oh gosh oh god it's very helpful <laughs> well you know at least that's something you've learned learning is fun oh yeah yeah it was so weird Already looks like both teams are here. We have Indeed. team one being toxic tryhards. Consisting it's... of uh oh Bowser and Knuffigies. Knuffigies Talking about uh, puffy. people from the past, yes. You gotta we add puffy on the end of it every time. Ah yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I that that's that's just a kerfuffle of full of syllables to try to put together. Nothing is puffy. Oh. I'm still not sure how to pronounce that. I'm fairly certain if you just randomly select three of those consonants, just like any three consonants, and make them silent, then you'll have pronounced it correctly. It doesn't matter which mm -hmm. three. Oh, yeah. Well, nonetheless, they are both familiar faces that we have seen in the, uh, at least in the um, pro, the, uh, the 2v2 league. Yes. So that will be very exciting, their experience in the 2v2 scene. Okay, let's get these guys commander bands. And it's Toxic Tryhard that starts. Yep. Ah, interesting. Caverns, Moonshot. Very nice. Scattershot is banned. All right. And team two bands. Eagle Eye. Okay. Eagle Eye. Interesting. Eagle Eye is banned. And with that, we Second should be ready. Interesting. I feel like they didn't know who to ban, so they're like, ah, just pick one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's also a strategy as well, banning yeah. something that you don't intend on using anyway. Uh, yeah. Keeping a commander that you want to. Open for the choosing, but the downside of that is that your opponent can choose it as well. So, 
Mm -hmm. Double-edged sword, that's for sure. Maybe they just don't care. Like, that's another strategy. <laughs> Very good. I believe so. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Let's do this. Alrighty. On the left, we have the Toxic Tryhards. Let's see their commanders here. Playing as Spook. Very, very spooky. <laughs> oh, God. And on the right-hand side, we have Team Tyrannos. Playing as Architect. I like that name. Very nice. We'll have to see if they can uh, master, the, master the use of Architect. As we've seen previously, uh, definitely very good for the late-game weapons. Uh, cannons and lasers. I think in these tournament style matches where it's just vanilla 2v2 or even 1v1 but especially 2v2 uh, architect shines in architect shines in its defensive capabilities just would spam the commander is how that works i think yes it's very nice yes as if you for those who are unfamiliar uh Certain weapons are very RNG based, namely these swarm missiles. When we're talking swarm missiles and defending against them, it's basically RNG whether or not you can. At least assuming that you're using most anti-air options. The only way to mitigate the RNG or at least to make it go away is to not build gunners, not build flak, but instead just build wood spam let them hit your base and just don't care about it because you have because wood is cheap and you can make these big open spaces of wood that can eat the shots without giving you any without receiving any real damage i just want to point out team one here they're just they're just sniping bowser yep. and newfig is poofy is uh is going going crazy with the sniping not only are they yeah. counter sniping and winning the sniper duels but they actually took out a turbine because that's just brutal yeah and forced oh, yeah. them to build a, a shield yeah that's gonna put team two on the back foot for a long time like team two doesn't even have doesn't even have their heavy weapons tech selected yet and it's uh that's just how that goes interesting going for mass <laughs> mass um buzz saws here That's well, uh, you know, geez. against Eaton, mass buzz saws works extremely well. Most other players aren't nearly greedy enough mm. to uh, fall to mass buzz saws. Uh, Bowser and Every... yeah, Team One here Double isn't fifth. vulnerable to that. Mm. Especially being at Spook, they would have known seeing mm -hmm. the buzz saws coming and prepared for them accordingly, which they did. And. Especially the sniping. That's another turbine falls. God. That's something yeah. you. That's like a once in a tournament experience, maybe, let alone mm -hmm. twice in a match. Oh, mm. yeah. Well, every sniper shot does charge the active ability more, uh, even if it is a little bit. So they are ever closer to having the, the architect active. Yeah, and that's that's so that is actually a good, a good topic to mention. Uh, team one knows that team two is architect. Team 1 also knows they don't want to charge the Architect active. Like, they want to do damage, but they don't want that Architect active to happen. Because if it does, then suddenly Team 2 has, um, has a cannon or a laser or three of them within a very, very swift time period. And that's just no fun. Or at least not for Team 1. Team 2 would love it, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh. We have a howitzer placed by uh, Team One top base here. Ooh. Very scary. Scary indeed. I think that's down before any heavy weapons from Team Two here, so that will be finishing before. Um, yeah, but I'm curious because that that's later than the typical howitzer placement, so they've mm. definitely decided to. Uh, maybe they changed. So that Team One is going for two things differently than the typical rush. Uh, they're going heavy eco. They've got all mines. They went heavy turbines. They built uh, expansions for their bases. Like these are not, these are not quick rushes. These are 
more of a, I'm going to build heavy weapons than I'm going to rush heavy weapons builds. Second, they aren't really doing much in terms of aggression, I'm going to say. They aren't, they aren't respecting much of what the opponents are doing, which, considering that they are spook, um, that's actually fair, because they would know the opponents aren't doing much, other than, you know, building buzzsaws, which they've already handled. Yeah, it's just a bit of a stalemate until the weapons come out, which is going to be very shortly for uh, Team 1 here. Uh, bottom base having that laser fire beam combo nearly done. Going to do a lot of damage. Yeah. So typically this combo hits a whole 60 seconds earlier than, well, now. So it's just going to be more than a minute delayed. And oh. he's going to hit the one energy shield. One shield, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's just unfortunate. Hmm. To be fair, uh, that's a, th that is a well-placed shield. That is exactly the space you want to hit with the fire beam plaza beam. Oh, yeah. But uh, To be fair to Team 1 here, their delayed delayed weaponry could be cause of the, uh, of the buzzsaws from Team 2. Having to build that extra armor just to make sure that you're not, not vulnerable. Uh-oh. I would nice shot. I would say it was more delayed because Team One didn't want to do a rush. Instead, they built five turbines, they built five mines, and mm. all the turbines, and then went early sniping. And I, I I think that they were never planning on doing a cannon o'clock timing, and they just weren't Oops. keen on oof, oh, massive Gordon damage. Very close. Yeah, that'd be great. The howitzer is ready. Here it comes. Oh. A bit oh. too low. Oh. <laughs> Tries to shoot it down. Oh. oh. The snipers. Snipe. The snipers have done Jeez. absolutely absurd damage. Team 2's bottom core has 2% health left. Uh. Oof. Oh. No energy. They're struggling for energy, which is a surprise to me, considering that... They're, oh, yeah, that's... Shot. That that cannon didn't penetrate, it's just splash damage. Oh, yeah. 2% health. It is very rough. 2% is not much. Here comes the howitzer. Uh oh. The howitzer? Ooh. A Perfect little aimed. slow on the reaction with the laser. He's <laughs> trying to snipe it and misses, but it's fine. Where there is now plasma laser. Does he have the angle? Ooh. Yes. Yes, he does. Just, <laughs> just over. There we go. Team one with the victory. G -G. It's starting to become the team two curse now. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. We've had this a few times. Uh, I I do. So for those wondering, uh, by I'm sure it's coincidence. Uh, Team 2 has been mostly newer and inexperienced players. It's We have uh, several newer teams, and by newer teams I mean teams of players that have not participated in tournaments before. And they just so happen to be getting on Team 2, so we're seeing Team 1 with the more experienced players kind of rolling over the newer players. Which is the expected and kind of the desired outcome for tournaments. Is that, that is kind of the point. But I, I do thoroughly enjoy seeing the newer players nonetheless. Because they always have these, well, new experience to bring. Mm -hmm. What's even better is seeing them come back for a third and fourth time and actually start to, actually start to improve. And I remember seeing most of the players... Cause we've had players that have gone from new players to tournament champions. Like I remember when characters like Eaton started to join. And now he's the most badged player in the game right now. And it's just, it's so nice. Mm -hmm. I get excited every time. Very good to see. But yes, and having a variety of tournaments like the map creator tournaments or the AI tournaments that really lets uh, players show their, their possibilities for different mediums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice to see. All right. So this 
Next match is going to be Genesis versus Forts Gamers. Genesis is a team we have seen before. I don't remember the Forts Gamers team, but are they? Oh, uh, these are actually. I don't recognize the names. I don't recognize the names, but they they do have ranks, so they have. They're not exactly new players, but they haven't been in a tournament before, at least not to my knowledge. Yes. All right. And are they team two or team one? So team one is the experienced, <laughs> uh, the experienced, uh, the experienced team that have been here and done this before. Mm -hmm. I don't believe they've ever actually won a tournament, but they have. Uh, they they are a good example of players that were once new, and have um, since come very very close to winning tournaments. Whereas yes. Team 2, I think, have never participated in a tournament before? I don't recognize them. At least, yes, I don't recognize them. Which, mm. I mean, I could, I could be quite scatterbrained and forgetful at times. <laughs> Speaking of scatterbrain, uh, we have Scattershot and Sipa Band. Oh. As the two commander bands for this, this, ratch, this match. Match and round mixed up into one word. <laughs> okay, right. I think we're ready. Indeed, we are. Uh, looks like it. Three, two, one. Let's For the go. Last match in round one. Indeed. And we're off. So here on team one on the left hand side, it is Lavin and Full. Ah, he changed his name, didn't he? <laughs> why did he? Why do they do this? Well, we have Lavin and Full Feli on the left hand side facing off against their opponents, Dark Huss and The Holiday. Yes. So, I believe those are cut off a little bit from their regular names, as the holiday is also uh, cut off slightly. Yes. But that is, uh, that's just how it is here. You could only have a name ah. so long before it gets truncated. Yes. So Interesting. On team, team I, two here is playing as Firebird. Yeah, Firebird. I, I feel like everyone sleeps on Firebird, and I feel like I sleep on Firebird and I know this because sometimes Firebird blindsides me and it hurts. <laughs> but Firebird's one of those commanders. It just feels like a strategic error to choose Firebird, but if you get it right, it's just so strong. Mm. So for those who are unfamiliar with the Firebird commander, the Firebird commander affects the fire effects. So things that would not normally have an incendiary effect will gain an incendiary effect during the commander active and additionally the passive incendiary effects tend to be a bit stronger so we have strategies for team for firebird that revolve around burning the players burning the opponent's forts to the ground slowly over time it's very high pressure lots of machine gunners flak ap snipers uh, mortars, or especially incendiary mortars, and something, some of the hybrid weapons as well, usually swarm missiles mixed in, just so you can ignite many things. Uh, even we'll sometimes see things like fog, the smoke launchers, which can prevent smoke from being, which can prevent fire from being extinguished. And it makes for these very high energy, high aggression play styles that just constantly burn the opponents down yes drain yeah. them of resources kind of deal the nice thing about the fire setting is it kind of splits the opponents uh what they're what they have to think about um so they always have to be checking for fire because of the disabled alarms mm -hmm. uh, so it just kind of causes them to split brain a bit more and focus on things and hopefully mess up for the other team yes and what it makes is for strategies that revolve around swiftly attacking your opponent and never letting up the pressure. Yes. And those kind of strategies can hit people very hard, and if they're not prepared or just slip up for any amount of time, well, that's a player eliminated. Hmm. And it looks like, I was about to say, things like, uh, at least for the Canon Tech, as uh, Team 2 has done, uh, 20 mils are the king. 
for Firebird here. Uh, mm -hmm. Setting a lot of fires in a lot of different places uh, is usually a good a good way of using the active. Yes. Um, I, there was some questions about whether or not you should even ever try to go for heavy weapons as Firebird. Uh, but mm. 20 mils are an option. I would say a later option. Yes. I'm curious to see that it looks like we have a standard cannon coming out of the lower player here, which doesn't... That looks like it. Which doesn't uh, fit the Firebird theme. Mm. Could just be there to just do real... <laughs> Real damage. <laughs> uh, Interesting. I am curious. So, <clears throat> hmm. I s do favor Team 1 and 2 win this. Just because they are the far more experienced players. We're going to see more refined builds. We're going to see their weapons hitting first kind of deal. Uh, mm -hmm. Team 2, I am watching because I am so very curious. I just suspect they're not going to beat out the experienced players, or the more experienced players. Oh, well, we don't really know Team 2 uh, much here. They seem to be knowing, uh, having their timings down. Yeah, they pretty, are pretty good. definitely competent, that's for sure. They are not yes. inexperienced at all. It looks like they're preparing to fire. Really, there's not been many things fired yet. Oh, what a first shot. No double doors, dead cannon. Fire beam plaza beam, oh. player oh, eliminated. Man. <laughs> well, like I was saying, no weapons have been shot yet. Cannon o'clock comes around, <laughs> team oh, two. Uh, without even having fired a shot, loses a player and most of their weaponry. Um, that's... I suppose that's part for the court. Oh, oh and it's again. gone. Jeez. Well, very well placed shots from uh, from Lavin and uh, Lavin and Full Felices here. That's this is what I expected to be. Yes. <laughs> to be uh -oh. frank. Oh, the mines. That it was almost a perfect follow through with the plasma beam. Oh and that's it. <laughs> and that's game over, boys. Uh, yes. As much as I dislike the offensive GG, shame on you, Lavin. Uh, he isn't incorrect. There is no real returning for that kind of economic damage, at least not in this scenario. Yeah, Team 1 here just disarming both players before they even really uh, do much. <laughs> just their first shots. Mm -hmm. Taking out the economy and the weapons. Uh, so, something of interest, just because it's interesting. Uh, team Team Two's top base was sliced so perfectly that its weapons are still intact. <laughs> it is possible for their there. yeah. It is possible for their remaining player to bridge their way up to the top, reclaim that weapon, and fire it. Um, I doubt we're going to see that at all. Probably a good idea for Team 2 here not to do that, uh, just because the weapons uh, probably will not make it through. Although there are four mines up there, so that would yeah. help his economy. But I if, he, feel it's, uh, if Team 2 tried that, it would just get sliced by the laser. It's just a funny thought. Oh, yeah. oh no. Oh, God. <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? <laughs> Lavin. He's already dead. He's opened He's, up oh, his yeah. core. Oh, like, yeah. okay. There we go. He's already Air surrendered. The yeah. He's already surrendered. Don't be Emin, please. <laughs> already. And uh, so victory goes to Team One. We're going to see. We're going to see Genesis, Levin, and crew moving on to the next round. GG indeed. It's very well played, just by virtue of having those weapons ready to fire, um, ready to go, almost immediately. Uh, slicing, slicing one base and disarming the other. Very good strategy. Yes, very, very good strategy. Very well played. Just a few seconds. It was actually just a few seconds too slow out of Team Two. That was that was close, actually. Mm. Oh yeah. Like they were, Team Two sacred did two things that they could have improved on. Uh, a little bit slow on the weapons, and they actually, 
sacrificed defenses for additional weapons, which was the reason that they were so swiftly dispatched, is they just were not unable to survive the initial alpha strikes of Team 1. But Yes, additionally, they were a bit behind on uh, economy as well. But, yes. But not by a substantial amount. Yes. And it was that was surprisingly close. If they were just a few seconds faster in those weapons, they could have yeah. at least gotten Team 1 on the back foot. I still would have favored Team 1 winning there because Team 1 had the defenses to eat the strikes for Team Team 2's weapons and just return fire. But they could have at least done some damage, maybe taken out a weapon or two from Team 1 and then had a longer game. Like, that was... Very close to Team 2 actually doing some very real damage there. Oh, yeah. So there's some information about the way the uh, bracket is working. I'm just going to echo what uh, uh, Rome has typed here, is that um, round two losing teams are not out of contention for a spot in the qualifiers. The three teams that lose in round two will compete in a tiebreaker for the last two qualifier spots. Okay. So of the teams here, we are going to have only one, only, what is it? Only one team that will be eliminated from the qualifiers? Uh, whichever team wins will immediately qualify regardless of the outcomes in later rounds. Mm -hmm. But the team that loses will compete against the other three losers from this round for the two, last two spots. Okay. Yeah, so there will be one, two, three, four. There will be three that will move on and will guaranteed qualification, and three that will have to fight for the last two. So only one team out of round two will fail to be qualified. That hurts. Indeed. All right. Well, it looks like we have the players here. Yep, just gotta get band started. Uh, Salzburg uh, and Stefan back on team one here for. Yeah. It's actually backwards. For, uh, Danke Merkel needs uh, yep. to be team one. There we go. All uh, right, scatter is, shot is bad. Be a very interesting match. Absolutely. Both players, both teams here, consisting of players who are very well known and very good. I think every battle's been under ten minutes so far, hasn't it? Mm. Uh, I, uh, I think there's a like a twelve minute one, right? Yeah, it's pretty. It's been pretty, pretty close. close. They've gotten so, close so far. <laughs> it has been it has been pretty close, but we have Scattershot and Pinch Fist Band in this next match. All right. Interesting. We'll have to see if the uh, Team 2 losing curses stays with us in round two. <laughs> That's what I'm interested to say. We'll see. We'll see. Oh. Team 2 is now just default the underdog at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> just, for, just for that reason. Can we have Target Tummy 2 win, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it looks like we're good to go. Cool. Oops. Typing in the wrong place. I do that more times than I'm willing to admit. Three, two, one. And we're off. All righty. Oh, this is a matchup we've seen before. On the left-hand side, we have Finn and Ambrulo with the Seep Commander. They're going to be going for Swarm Missiles, and everyone knows it because uh, their opponents on the other side. It's Salzwerk and Stefan with the Spook Commander. So they see everything that Team 1 is doing, and it is going to be, it is going to be wild, and I cannot wait. There are no secrets in this match. So it would seem. So, with the Seep Commander, 
it's basically guaranteed to be swarm missiles because I mean, what you don't choose seep doesn't really do anything else, and seep being extremely powerful to those swarm missiles, you go swarm missiles every time. Team two is going to know this. Like the swarm missiles are already being placed. Team two's got to react. Well, I'm curious to see how they handle this. Remember that these are experienced players. These are the kind of players that have, uh... They have tournament victories to their name. So, I'm more looking to see how do they defend it than... Uh, than uh, if they'll defend it or what the outcome exactly is going to be. It's more of, well... What is your response this answer. time? Yes. Interesting. Uh, two dual factories coming out from Team 2 here. Both players opting for the the laser route. Uh, selling mm -hmm. off their tier 1 tech. Uh, same for tier one or team 1 here. Selling off their tier 1 tech uh, going for the upgrade center is the typical typical strategy in this in this rush. Yes. That is exactly correct. Uh, it looks like they're not being... I actually like this rush from Finn and Embrilo. They still have metal on the front. They're not vulnerable to buzz saws. Uh, Team 2 did get some buzz saws. I'm surprised to see that they haven't really defended against the swarms yet. Uh, they are starting to react. But they aren't. Oh, going for the mines? Yep. This other swarm missile might... Oh, jeez. Oh, that's big damage. Oh, yeah. Going Did the snipes if they get another one in there? get another one? It hits, but... Just barely. Just barely. Team 2 stealing resources, activating the spook com uh, commander ability just to get those resources back to build the mines. Uh, kind of a, you destroy my mines, I'm, I'm going to steal yours. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like Team 2's response is basically ignore them, which is... Concerning, to say the least. Uh, they're not counter sniping, so they're losing machine gunners. They haven't really built machine gunners, instead, just using wood spam in an attempt to face tank, which, you know, that works, but they're not architects, so they don't have the efficiency that you, they, I would think they would need in order to actually survive doing that. Um, yeah. Typically, I would say just uh, face tank the swarms. Obviously, you need a bit more defenses than uh, Sal's work had here on Team 2. Um, but once you are able to face tank the swarms, then just focus on your heavy weapons because those are the things that are going to save you from the nukes. Uh, yes. Killing them first is going gonna, is gonna to save you from dying. Yes, and that is their strategy here. I'm just concerned about the implementation, but you know, uh... <laughs> I we'll have to see. Yes, that's that's why we're here to see how that turns out. Yeah, it's no no lasers placed yet. Looks like they're just focusing on defenses now. Uh, Sal's work losing those two mines is gonna it's gonna take a while for him to get those weapons down. Okay. Or well, indeed, he does have a thousand metal. Not bad. Yeah. There uh, is a laser. Well. So this is something I'm not surprised by. I put in the laser adjacent to the core. Uh, there's a couple reasons they would want to do this. Um, for one, if they lose the laser, they lose the game. So losing the core along with the laser is not particularly, not particularly uh, different. Uh, second, by putting it adjacent oh. to the core, they don't have to defend a second location. As three nukes come out. Oh, oh, oh. the third. <laughs> <laughs> that metal is so damaged. Yeah. Jeez. Very close. So this is why I was concerned for Team 2 here and their lack of a strong response. Multiple nukes, you can't face tank it. You will just explode. Yeah. They, this, all this massive ablative armor defended against exactly two nukes. The third one didn't oh make God. it. And it's they the don't have, ability. yeah, they don't have the money to rebuild. So that one's just going to hit and cost even more money to repair and rebuild. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Firing more nukes, pr probably at top one goes base. Down. One nukes gets taken out. Both other, get taken oh, out. Wow. Last second. I love uh, that sound effect, nukes. by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorites. Like That's my two favorite sound effects. The howitzer and oh, yes. 
the the seep warhead cluster <laughs> missile explosion. Those are my oh, two yeah, favorite yeah. sound effects. It's beautiful. <laughs> That's cool. The uh, the phantom muffled ones, the ma the muffled weapons are also my favorite. Oh, those are just they're, so uh, good. Yeah, they sound kind of neat. Oh yeah. yeah. The muffled howitzer. Oh. Very nice. <laughs> So oh, this dupes. should be the quad launch. No, nope. just bottom player just now. Just pressure. I think just trying to apply pressure here. Hmm. Salzburg laser is just coming online. Uh, Stefan's is a little bit slower. Oh. Nuke gets shut down. I'm sorry. We, we have team two has like between one and two gunners and is managing to take out the nukes fairly consistently, which is wild, by the way. Oh yeah. Oh. Firebeam looks like it's about to happen. Yeah, I think Team One knows that as well. Yeah, they're getting sandbags preemptively. They're not even spook, and they know they're about to get hit by this. Oh yeah. Oh, going for the tech. Ooh, gets the tech. Does he get sniped? Nope. Not I mean, that's Team One here. It's damage, but it isn't going to relieve pressure. True. It's not going to slow down the incoming nukes, which is really what they need to be doing. Um, yes. Killing turbines would be probably have been a better solution, but lasers are going to come in here for the defense. Yep. Ooh. Massive damage. Ooh. Yeah. Note, Team 2's top player, Stefan, has managed to get a laser as well, which shut down the nukes from the top player, shut down Umbrilo's nukes. So this has managed to stabilize. Uh, after taking absurd damage from Team 1's missile pressure. Team 2 is actually managing to uh, is actually managing to return fire and deal not insignificant damage. It's not enough to slow the pressure just yet, but it's going to change very quickly here. Indeed. Um, right now, the, probably the easiest targets for Team 2 here would be uh, the mines on bottom player. Uh, those mines are fairly fairly open um although that still would not really stop the uh the nukes from firing which is really what they need to be doing so team uh, team one here has shielded their turbines um just in preparation for them getting shot at yes but team team one has done something that i appreciate they built energy shields they've got energy shield defending their mines and their turbines uh oh oh, oh! wow what timing uh oh this nuke oh wow no it's core okay damage. no core damage what a shot. He's put spaced doors up the front, so that's going to be fine. Uh, Ambrulo lost basically his entire base. So for those who didn't catch it, uh, Ambrulo launched his his nukes. But Stefan here used the plasma laser to fire through Ambrulo's base, over-penetrating and detonating the nukes while they were still inside Ambrulo's, well, launch tubes. Which hmm. was just dealing obscene damage to Ambrulo here, taking out all of his turbines and basically everything on, on top of his base. That's going to set Ambrulo way back and prevent him from firing his weapons for uh, a solid minute at least. Oh uh, yeah, Ambrulo here has really no energy. Um, nukes taking 2,000 energy, or 4, yeah, 4,000 each to fire. Oh yes, absolutely. But going to take a while. At this point, I think Team 2, they've they've evened it it's this is not a good position for finn and Ambrulo here this is not what you want your game to look like sure they're not out of it just yet but uh oh the momentum isn't on their side anymore the machine uh -oh. gunners are online Both. oh geez i was lucky they hit but oh, they don't do anything oh my god the nukes <laughs> it makes it through here it goes firebeam doing critical internal damage uh, for Finn here. Jeez. Doesn't kill anything, but just lights a lot of things on fire. That's just a repair bill. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm surprised Team 1 hasn't invested more in shields, just kind of in general, uh, since Team 2 really only has only has a uh, laser. Although... They're having energy is, issues as is. Yeah, very true. Oh. Nuke 1 makes it through. Oh, jeez. Nuke 2 makes oh, it man. too. To be fair, uh, Team 1 still has map control. Oh. They own the sniping. 
Team 2 Very can't true. quite get their gunners online. Looks like uh, Stefan is getting a second laser out. Uh, probably a good idea. They just need to really get more damage output just to chunk through the defenses. Um, at one point, he did have an AP sniper, which was doing good work, but of course, it got sniped. Yes, Team 1 has been the far superior snipers. Oh. Oh, jeez. Still dealing no core damage, uh, for, at least from the previous shots. Still that, 86%. That one was just bad RNG on Team 1s, or perhaps not good enough for it. I don't know whether they're having bad RNG or good RNG at this point. Like, it's just <laughs> all over the place. It's half and half. Mm. Like, that, there was no reason those nukes couldn't have just gone any more straight and just nailed Salzburg's core. But Salzburg oh, yeah. actually hasn't managed to get the, his forward doors again, which are kind of necessary in order to keep those nukes away. Oh! oh. Very nice shot. Dealing sh one core damage to Finn here. <laughs> the shot from above cleaning all of Finn's energy, uh, all of his turbines and a battery. Both nukes get shot down from top base. Uh, now the bottom nuke. Oh, it gets shot down as well. Jeez, those airburst nukes, uh, or the airburst air burst swarms coming out. They go everywhere. They do. Just destroying the nuke isn't enough to make it uh, harmless. Mm. Oh. Team 2 there for a little bit was retaliating with snipers, uh, doing a good job at taking out Embryolo and Finn's uh, offensive snipers, but... The fire beam, taking so. out his last turbine. Mm. Poor Finn. He has two active energy shields and zero turbines to fuel them. <sighs> very rough. He's very close to having negative energy here. It is not a good experience for Finn right now. So something interesting in, uh, to note, in Ambrillo's base, he has four mines and still has uh, two nukes. He built a mine out in front, which is possible on this map to do, although very risky uh, if you're defending it. But he has put a substantial amount of bracing in front of, in front of the mines. Yes. However, uh, usually with, with uh, nuke builds, people are low on metal just because of the sacrificing uh, places for, for slurm launchers. But with this build, it's uh, less sacrificing. Uh oh. Although. Ooh, jeez. That was the dangerously close. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Uh -oh. Touching the tech there means that it's just going to drain all of his material to repair it. The airburst. Airburst nuke, or airburst swarms take out the rest of the gunners that had their doors open, which means the nukes have clear air to fly through. Jeez. That hurts. There's guys. Ooh, just a One minute, minute left. 60 seconds left in the match. And right now, Team 1 is in the lead in mm. core damage. So in 45 seconds, if Team 2 does not eliminate a core or deal ridiculous damage to a core, the, the Team 1's going to win. Mm. Finn selling off his second nuke, uh, just because at this point he, he realistically can't fire it um, in tandem with the first, so might as well use it for other defensive means. Absolutely. Uh, 20 seconds. Team 2 is going nice, to get nice another chance to matches. fire. But you always have to re be reevaluating your uh, situation, making sure there's nothing else you could be doing better or more efficiently. Oh, the turbine. <laughs> oh, that was... Oh! That was it's uh -oh. too late. Panic firing there. <laughs> Trying to do any damage. Jeez. And that's it. Well played. Team 1 with a very, very close victory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, just as we were saying before this match, there's only been, uh, you know, <laughs> no games that went to the time limit until now. Until. Surprise. Yep. And there we have it. If only they had aim. Yeah, no, they yeah, both weird. of those last plasma beam shots went straight into the straight into the mountain. Didn't even hit the base. That hurt. That hurt so much to watch.
Very, very close match. Very well played by both teams there. Yes. Uh, we have the curse continuing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Team one Team with the victory. Indeed. Well, thank you, Merkel. Moves on to the, or uh, moves on to go to the tiebreaker, I believe, right? Uh, so team one won that. Donk and Mirko won that. Uh, yes. So they'll move on to the semifinals where team two, Eaton's coaches, uh, will be moving on to the tiebreaker. Ah, uh, okay. Because they were the, uh, they're going down into the the lower bracket. Uh, it's not really a bracket. It's invisible. We'll just it, pretend it's there. Yes. <laughs> yep. Next up, we have Copium versus the Wild Chicks. Yes. No, we haven't heard. You know, I I do have a question uh, for for Knight Sinclair actually. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yes. Like, what ha what have your thoughts on seeing this? Like, I, I I don't like I know a lot of these things that we're talking about can be. Oh, we're looking at this this fine detail that just isn't apparent to the casual observer. But w what do you see? What stands out to you with some of these some of the events that are going on? I think I mean I find it um, it's honestly really good to watch. Uh, it's really entertaining. Um, I think no matter really your skill level, because it's always nice to watch people that are really good at what they do um but yeah i've been really really enjoying it uh yeah i think that is one thing i like about forts <laughs> even if you don't know what you're even if you can't quite get all the strategic nuances you can uh you can at least enjoy the um, the eargasm of sound effects and the giant explosions <laughs> it's very nice yeah. to watch. Explosions are always good. No, yeah, it's been really good, and it's it's really nice to see other people's strategies as well. Um, yeah, Have you been really taking good. notes for your your uh, my when, when, when you, I'm uh, going to be pro? When you're oh, going to be pro and in <laughs> yeah. in the competition? Yeah. Well, first my teammate will be. Um, uh, Eaton, then um, that's how I'm gonna win. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a distraction. Kill me first. <laughs> yeah. Good lord. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, that has been a statistically uh, viable strategy. It's worked pretty well for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Teaming up with Eaton? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Is the strategy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What I'm speaking of which, I'm super. I am the next thing I'm looking forward to, I think the most that I'm excited about is the next AI tournament because it's going to be a AI plus AI creator. It's going to be like a, a tag team, it's going to be one human player and one AI, right? Oh, yeah, and I looky, I am so excited. I'm looking forward to yeah, that. Yeah, I can't wait. I just want to see more mortars. <laughs> oh, well, we know what Eaton's uh, going to do. Oh, yeah. I am. I'm not sure if the map has been sele uh, selected yet for the next AI tournament. I don't know if it's been announced. No, not yet. It hasn't. It hasn't been. It, ah. That is, there's a few things in between today and the next AI tournament, but yes, I'm still so excited. Eden says he's been I think, I think Battleships was, was in the talk for a while, or at least up for a poll. I, God. I think <sighs> Battleships is when we want to do pure AI. Oh, yeah. Just, that is just, I, it's a nightmare to record for like a regular vanilla base. I can't imagine trying not to mess up while doing like a 45 minute build on Battleships. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's going to be brutal. Everyone becomes uh, professionals at editing the scripts inside the Lua files. Yes. I just couldn't take it anymore. In before Battleship gets hyper-optimized. Oh, yeah. I would be very interested to see if it was easier to build uh, or make AIs for those maps. I would be very interested to see how how the uh, the builds would come out for Battleships. Uh, I mean, only one way to find out. <laughs> At Kronk. Um, do we have the teams correct? Uh, we have Mech Looks and like Noah. It. Let's see. 
Yes, I think so. Yes. Mm -hmm. These are set yes. correctly. Yes, we do. So team one. Yep. All right. We have Ski uh <laughs> Seep and Scattershot both banned for this this round. Neither team will be able to play either of them. Both uh, both scary players or both scary commanders, but we haven't seen a scatter shot yet. I don't think. I'm uh, I'm kind of waiting. I'm uh, I'm excited. Ah. Yes, mm -hmm. we want the mortar spam. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a few matches where scatter shot wasn't banned, but no one has selected him. Yes, that's what I've been I've been waiting for. <laughs> oh God, I think Noah referred to you as Calor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that uh, was funny. I I I enjoy messing with people sometimes. I find it quite enjoyable. Yes, Noah's sleep def de sleep deprived state. <laughs> he was uh, very confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we just need everybody to ready up. Yeah, looks like we're good, like to, we're go, good to go. All right, go team two. Break <laughs> the curse. Mildly related, I think this is going to be another case of Team 1 being far more experienced than Team 2. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Although it will be interesting to see uh, Team 2 here play as we didn't get to see them in the first one. Uh, yeah, actually. All right, guys. See. Ready? Here we go. I think so. Three, two, one. Oh, nice. It's Wingman as well. Let's do this. I, uh, I really like this one. And we're off. Here on the left-hand side, it is Mech70 and Noah. We have some extremely highly experienced players here on this side facing off against their opponents. It's Buan Uo-chan and Dami. <laughs> Uh, I have a vested interest well in seeing explosions happen to one of these teams. <laughs> uh, yes, all well, very interesting. We have a commander we haven't seen in this tournament, at least so far. We have Phantom on uh, Team 2 here. Yeah, a Phantom shall be real. I have such mixed feelings on Phantom in a tournament setting. Phantom is quite fun, and as we've seen in some of our live streams, Phantom can be quite good. Um, you just have to have some cheesy, cheeky tactics to go with it. We're talking howitzer drops. We're talking uh, giant co-op maps where you can move oh, weapons around and play with the doors. But in these tournament matches, Phantom's whole gimmick relies on subterfuge, on making your opponent think that you're going for one build and cause them to overreact when you're really going for a different build. And tournament players, we're talking the experienced players like Noah and Mech 70 here, they just don't fall for that kind of stuff, which defeats most of the benefit of going for Phantom here. And, well, Mech 70 and Noah, they're playing Pinch Fist, they're getting greedy with their rushes, and they're just going to blow them up. They're going to take Phantom and <laughs> turn them into a ghost. Mm -hmm. That's just what's going to happen here, and Phantom has approximately 120 seconds left to live at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, those dual swarms nearly finished on Noah's base there. Uh, mech going for late game weapons, uh, going for lasers here. Usually how this, uh, this map works out, especially on uh, 2v2s. Oh, here going comes for the, the turbines. Yes. Oh, the sandbags. I don't know if they saved it, but... Uh, ooh. Oh! Wow. Very close. Very, very oh, close. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, uh -oh. here comes the sniper. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna finish it off. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. So the first shots have been fired. No serious damage done to any player. But... The pressure is now on, 
And with the nukes, nukes being placed, or nukes starting to be upgraded, we have a limited amount of time before Phantom has to eat those shots. Uh, we do see the flak being placed inside the base, and which will be moved over to the forward firing position momentarily. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Team 2 is not really playing any brain games. They're not placing any ghost uh, tech structures or mines or weapons in the ground. Uh, well, nukes. Um, yeah. Nothing of that sort, which is interesting. But, I mean, I guess if, if they know Team 1 won't fall for it, then there's not much uh, point in wasting APM on it. But still, it's fun. <laughs> that's fair. I mean, there's no reason not to try. If you expect your opponent Very to true. win, that doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you're not going to attempt to, you know, blow them up. But... Oh, yeah at least make them spend the brain power and APM to think about it. But that True. is, Team 2 is not doing any kind of mind games at all. They're just going with a standard build and utilizing Phantom's uh, moving weapon moving ability to uh, build them in a more safe location and move them forward. Oh. Um, well, that's a Magda Beam. <laughs> that is a Magda Beam, and I, have n I haven't the foggiest idea what they're going to do with that one. But... Oh. Ooh, that nuke. That was very oh, close. No. Uh oh, oh, oh. oh no. <laughs> but it oh, makes geez. it anyways. Ooh. And uh nearly. Flack down. I had to move it last second but was uh, unfortunately too slow. Still very uh very nice about this uh about Phantom is the ability to move things. Yes. Definitely the highlight of of her. That is the biggest strength of Phantom. The ability to move items, move weapons to and fro, either into danger, out of danger, or just to mess with things. To mess with your opponent. But, oh, the swarms didn't get ignited. Hitting the magna beam a little bit, but... Uh, didn't do any real damage, I don't think. Oh, he moving tried. the flak last second. Oh, oh, very nice. And... and throwing it back down there. Yeah, and it's safe again. Uh, mm. That's a lot of APM to try to keep up with, just to have a flak there. True. You gotta be careful uh, with that. Two, team 2 top base did delete his uh, uh, their, their munitions plant, so there will be no more cannons coming out of uh, Buon Owo Chan, <laughs> Owo -chan up here. Uh, oh, jeez. Oh. oh, the buzzsaw. The dual buzzsaw, uh-oh. Oh! It cuts deep, but the nuke doesn't go through the hole. Uh, is that going to escape? It is going to escape. Just barely. Just barely indeed. Uh, it looks like they're going to try to go with the uh, Magna Beam cannon combo to try to trick shot it up and around the defenses to get it into the back of the core, uh, which is entirely possible, and they have the ability to do that. There is potential lethal damage available right now for Team 2 against Team 1. I strongly oh. suspect that will not happen. Yes, uh, I mean, oh, oh, oh that was close. <laughs> Down to a single strut of wood of defense between life and explosion. Looks like Team Both 2 is desperate, cloaking. and they're going to try to fire it. And oh, that was wow! Awful. Very nice, <laughs> very nice attempt. Very, very close. That was. Uh, Definitely an eye-opener moment for Team 2 here, or Team 1 here. Oh, yeah. Um, at least with Noah's base, he does have some... Uh, he definitely has a few places where it could, a cannon could go straight into his core from the top. Uh, yes. The turbine layer, there's no defenses there. It will go straight through. Um, probably what the what Team 2 was hoping for, but he's moving his sniper now to remove that, that, uh, that weakness there. Yes, Noah um, now defending himself from, from those trick shots. Oh, yeah. So we could reason... Like terrifying. It we can reasonably expect that will not have an opportunity to work again. Mm. That was their one shot, their one opportunity, one chance to make it. <laughs> Team 2, uh, Dami moving his, uh, moving his turbine just because he was afraid of it dying. <laughs> I mean, why not? It works. Very true. Ooh. Almost, almost, uh, nipping the, uh, the magnum beam there. Very close. They're going to try the trick shot again. Uh, I don't really like see it. a place where they can. Oh. It goes into 
it goes into oh, his base, and actually, that's a. I went way deeper than I anticipated, yeah. but you know, oh, yeah. it did some core damage. It got some splash damage, so that's that's nice. Very true. Uh, with that cannon shot, uh, Team Two is now in the lead um, for core damage, technically. So. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 massive oh, damage. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. Team one retaliates with massive firepower, just overwhelming the defenses of Team Two's top player here, mm. leaving them with very little left and not much of a core to speak of. Looks like looks like Mech here is getting a second laser, just to really put the nail in the coffin here, with his uh, with his uh, offensive output. I mean, when you've got overkill, why not add more overkill? Oh yeah. Uh oh, looks like uh, <laughs> the magnum beam was getting moved onto a place that was being killed. Oh. That was. More core damage. Yeah. Not bad. I mean, if they can keep chunking away at his core, it's ah, there could be a chance. Just splash damage at this point. It's, it has the same effect of just sending a cannon straight into the forward energy shield of Noah here. Like that isn't. Mm. It's just one cannon. Uh -oh. It isn't enough firepower. Even Jeez. more damage. 18%. Uh-oh. And the laser follow-up. Oh, no. no. Uh-oh, the tower. <laughs> the tower. It wobbles the and noodle. falls. <laughs> well, at least he didn't collapse himself. <laughs> Defensive noodle. <laughs> you know, he's he's built that every time the missiles have launched, which is good. Very good response. It has yet to be used or hmm. done anything. But... I mean, He's trying, yeah, and that's what matters. The nuke a, just a hits the wrong target. Yeah, very true. As a, a, a last-ditch effort, um, Dami here could move the Magda Beam into a place where it would get shot, uh, diverting the nukes to uh, to somewhere else instead. Something Indeed. we see often on battleships and big maps. It's basically... It's a strategy, uh, but it is a very good strategy. It does cost you the entire... Uh, well, cost of... A magna beam, but it does render oh, yeah. you effectively immune to all damage for a few seconds. Uh, team two here, if they had, oh, backwards oh, flak. Wow. Very nice. It does not survive, but he had backwards flak there for a moment, and it worked out. That worked very well. Oh, magna beam. That magna placed beam again. Every single time is just seconds away from death. Here we it go. has a death witch. Oh no! Oh, it wasn't. It was uh, repairing. Yeah, and that is one so of the close. big issues. The timing of coordination required is extreme. Oh yeah. Oh, no more backwards flak. Oh wait, yes there is. <laughs> Jeez. He just could. He could put it back every time. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh no. Team 2's top base is just Swiss cheese, oh, there and there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Death for to his crimes humanity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey! There's the Magna Beam. They're invisible now. We can uh, still see them the because we are spectators, but Team observers. 1 cannot currently observe or see anything on Team 2's base. Yes. Additionally, the laser pointer for the missiles from Noah there uh, went through the base as well. Uh, so they can't even uh, kind of map out where the bases are. Yes. Um, which is a nice feature. Of course, they could still blow up the base by hitting it with kinetics oh, yeah. and explosions of every kind. Noah adding some stability tech. Here lies one of the issues with going for the plasma beam magna beam com or the magna beam cannon combo. Uh, team two no longer has any weapons, as the magna beam alone cannot deal damage. Yes. Oh man, talking about the howitzer swings makes me want to say, <laughs> just swing the magna beam. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have just just to get it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to do anything else with it. At least give it some value of rendering me immune to nukes for one shot. Yes. Oh, now it makes me want to have one of those uh, big maps in a tournament. <laughs> Jeez. 
At least that's one tactic the AI won't be using. <laughs> that's true. Oh, finally pre-firing the flax. Um, saving him a lot of trouble. Noah has so much blinkiness in his base. Alas, he is still nowhere near collapsing. Hmm. Stability tech Ooh. strong. It's about a minute 30 left on the clock here. Uh, I don't see us. I don't see a situation where Dami can come back from this. Only just tank and defend. Yeah, I, um, Dami has been trying to save up for a, a weapon for some time. It's just the energy requirement. It's too much. Dami's been defending and hasn't been able to actually get a weapon out. And, and at this point, it's too late. Even if Dami does start building a plasma laser, it won't complete. Let alone, let alone fire before the timer expires. This is over. Unless the mortars coming Noah, online for Noah here. Yeah, there, there would have to be Street team upgraded. killing involved. <laughs> yes. Some bribery. The new connecting. Jeez. Plasma beam capitalizes. Yeah. Jeez, dual laser fell up. Like, Dami's got some thick defenses here. Mm. Like, Although, his defenses are more on the front and not on the top, so he's going to need to uh, defend the top if he wants to stay alive for another 20 seconds. <laughs> I think he's got this. Dami's got that thickness, and uh, I don't think Team 1's going to get the elimination before, before the end here, but it will still be a Team 1 victory nonetheless. Oh, the mortars... Oh, the, the nuke, nuke goes wild. And with that, G. Team 1 takes a victory. Oh, selling off. There we go. <laughs> Synchronous <laughs> explosions. <laughs> oh, gosh. And there we have Mech 70 and Noah moving on. GG, well played. Alrighty, well, the next match gets set up. I will be right back. Excellent. So next up, we have the Toxic Tryhards versus Genesis. I think some people in chat will... We're saying like team one moment, <laughs> team one energy. You gotta start your day with team one energy. <laughs> big team one energy. Yeah, yeah big team one energy. <laughs> today I'm a winner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the nanny meme where and then all he needs to say is like, I mean, I'm on team one. And then you're like, I've lost. I've lost. Looks like our players are here. Bowser and Nufidis. That phantom flak was smooth. It was unexpected. Mm -hmm. You generally don't get to see backwards weapons. And I liked that. Oh, yeah, what map? And uh, Rome has set up a separate uh, challenge for the tiebreaker. All right. I did she see that. Thank shared, you. Shared the link with you. Yay! Romero is so very good at the cat herding. He is. He is. Best community manager ever. He's so very good at it. All right. It looks like we have. Looks like we have the bands. Bands completed. 
Scattershot and Pinch Fist Band. Okay, so now this is one where I'm actually uncertain who's going to win. I don't have a particular favorite for this one. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, stacked um, lobby. <laughs> yeah. Stacked lobby, very stacked. I am curious to see how this one's going to go. If I were to guess... If I were to be forced to pick a favored team here, I would guess Bowser and Nufigas, but I could I am not confident enough to to put money or anything on that. Yeah, with matches like this, it's very uh, easy for it to go either way. Players are very good. Oh yeah. Nufika's name sounds like uh, when you like just uh, like can't read a word. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nufika's <laughs> poofy. <laughs> Nufika's poofy. I think it's gonna be a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can one ban Eaton instead of Pinch Fist? That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when is Eaton Commander? <laughs> Okay, uh, I think we're good to go, right? We are indeed. Here we go. Three, two, one. All right. Let's go. In the final match of round two. Yes. On the left side, we have the Toxic Tryhards. And on the right, we have Genesis. Take a look at the commanders here. We have, ah, Spook versus Buster. Interesting. Buster. Buster gets the uh, cheaper or the no-cost nodes. Yes, very good for this map. is extremely good for this map. Of course, we're still going to see them minimize their node usage anyways because that's how these players do. But they do have free nodes, which means they can connect to Foundation without having to pay the additional cost. Oh yeah, uh, it's it's very helpful, especially for a map like this with uh, with uh, team two uh, player, the upper player up here. Um, both bases they have to build out more and more nodes to just build more turbines. So uh, he's no longer limited by that by that factor. Yes, is, uh, very nice. More stability, more mm. strength. Yeah, small things, small things like that add up over time. Hmm. Jeez. Yeah, the they snipers. have been <laughs> they have been aggressive with their sniping perpetually. Mm. And I am so happy with this. Like <laughs> it's their they're kind of their MO right now. Yes. It makes me makes me very happy. This is the kind of thing I like doing to people. And so me seeing someone else do it just it, it, it makes me happy because I could resonate with this. Like I relate to using snipers just to annoy people. Even if it's not actually doing something, this is this is what I like. This is this is me right here, <laughs> living vicariously through this. Lovely. <laughs> it's just shooting a sandbag over it again. Does it do it feels anything? It's like an AI battle. No. Yeah, <laughs> sandbags, costing literally nothing to repair, just eating every shot from the sniper because he can. It's like I will shoot only. your sandbag with my sniper not because it does anything but just because i want to interesting looks like we have lavin going uh rockets i'm guessing those are yes we're going to have rocket play out of team two looks like both players are going to be going rockets with the armory and the and the heavy and the uh, upgrade technology Whereas Team yes. One's going for a similar strategy, I would imagine. We have an armory coming out of Nufigas Poofy. 
And that's going to be the Swarm Missile play out of the Bowser, their lower player. I hasn't placed the Swarm Missile yet, which is a little late. But I guess he's busy doing something else. There's the Swarm it Missile is. placed. Looks like Bowser's going very uh, very defensive here with those gunners placed where mortars normally would go. Uh, but there, they're very protected and uh, able to defend uh, Knuffkeys. Yes. Which is something you want. Although, uh, with this map, it's kind of hard to really do trench to anything. Uh, everything has an angle everywhere. Yes. If you build higher, low enough. And this is why the, the extra elevated snipers all the way up in heaven are quite powerful. Because all these trench gunners will have direct line of sight to a sniper that's built by the top player. Mm. Yes, the height advantage is real. It, uh, it reminds me of a clip I saw someone who's using the shotgun barrels to connect a portal to a, a nuke, dropping that little barrel thing with the portal on it just to get lower and then just to uh, fire the nuke from like the bottom of the map. <laughs> it's uh, It was pretty interesting, the ingenuity behind it. Hmm. Oh, Please. that hurts so Flex. much. So the buzzsaw doesn't actually directly destroy the flak there, but the buzzsaw can destroy the platform upon which the flak is sitting, which will in turn destroy the flak. A tickling of swarm missiles. <laughs> yes. And AP sure. snipers as well. The sniper duels. At this point, there's been yeah. like no real weapons fired. It's just tickling and posturing. Tickling. Makes me those, think of frazzed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> those uh, those AP uh, snipers from Kanafagis really forced um, forced Team Two's hand to get those double doors out. Uh, usually a good way of slowing down your enemy. Yes, uh, assuming that you didn't slow yourself down by getting the upgrade center, but... Yes, yeah, true. Which, I don't know. He does have flax. Might go to shotguns uh, up there. Knafagis might. Um, we'll have to see. Yeah, I'm not sure why Knafagis went for went for the upgrade center. Hmm. Ah, interesting. But, yeah. Uh, so, Team 2 activated the commander ability adding the uranium or depleted uranium effect to all of their weapons, giving them additional penetrated power and an, and a mild incendiary effect. Unfortunately for Team 2, uh, Team 1 strongly dominates the map. They have full map control with extra gunners and the whole nine yards. So they, uh, they shut down everything Team 2 did. Team 2 fired their weapons and did nothing. Team 2 has to desperately attempt to win the sniper duels and actually retake map control. I mean, look at this. Team 2 has a doored sniper. Team 1 just has exposed snipers, plural, and nothing is happening about them. That's the state of the game right now. And Team 2 has to change that. Has to... Oh! Oh! Oh, oh my gosh. the critical that hit. Just... Yes. Looks the, like, geez. The internal detonation. Yep. That's a big team one moment. <laughs> <laughs> the curse lives. <laughs> it continues. Oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, no. That is very rough. That, um, that, uh... Look at the replay of that one. Oh, yeah. Good lord, that was... So for those who didn't catch it, the buzzsaw destroyed a battery because the battery was just undefended. The battery exploded, taking out the rest of the base, or at least causing it to collapse and deform and inevitably explode. Because that was entirely unexpected. That's and ironic. Usually uh, Bowser is the one dying to those unfortunate shots, but he's now... Uh... He's now dishing them out. He's well, uh, he's had a bit of a reputation lately. Ah, so it would seem. Here we have, like, oh, the sniper. Oh god, <laughs> the janky connection down to the, <laughs> the down the bottom turbines. Oh, he's gosh. just trying to get the additional economy. 
But here Make comes the nuke. Make it stop dancing, please. Oof. Not much for that. And it's gone. That's not getting recovered. To be fair, he is the buster commander, so he can still get back there without costing everything. Uh, but that's still quite the investments. Oh. And now there's a cannon. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, there's dual cannons. Uh, one is just probably not going to see see the end. <laughs> oh man, Elise is here just being stripped of all of his defenses. Oh, imagine the battery explodes and he and Felicis gets eliminated in the same way. God. That's possible. There's That's one a... buzzsaw oh, away yeah. from it. Oh. Or cannon shell. That is shell. the thing about this map. The uh, the angles, the severe angles, allow for a lot of things to be just completely weakened uh, because they're they're supporting strut dies yes it's, a, it's an issue <laughs> that obviously has some uh, big consequences oh my gosh three percent three percent yeah oh i think he's aiming for the battery with the buzzsaw <laughs> he I, might think, be. I think he's actually trying for it Oh, he's deleting the battery so it doesn't happen. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> That's wise. I don't see a path to victory here for Team 2. No weapons, <laughs> yes. no technology. I that idea. <laughs> the, uh, the base is just missing. And there, there it go. goes. Shot. Straight to the core. Oh, wow. I now see no longer any... Uh, any winning redeeming qualities for team two here <laughs> i i need to watch the replay of that yeah me too where was oh, that yeah. right here because this is we're going to see yeah that's exactly what it was we're going to see some wild destruction here in a strange sequence of events where the battery It'll gets be destroyed this, one, this last play Mm -hmm. I missed it. Triple room. A chain reaction of batteries. You gotta look out for those, especially putting them that close to your foundation. Even if it didn't destroy the core, it would have done enough damage to the foundation that the entire base would basically just deform into uh, something that you would never be able to fix. Because that's that's how it works there. Jeez. Yeah, it looks like it chain reacted to another battery and just took the core with it. That was a beautiful shot. Indeed. Well, very well played. Very, very well played. <clears throat> but that team one takes the victory. Our toxic tryhards move on to the semifinals of this uh, qualifier. Uh, so we can go into a tie break or continue with the main qualifiers which do we want to do i am i uh no comment <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem when we give us give us options rum <laughs> <laughs> yes just tell just us what tell we're doing and it works do. out well <laughs> someone make a decision Tie break. Let's go. Let's go tie break because then, like you know, we will get the good stuff. You know, at the very end. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Sure. I think that's a good call. Okay. So for the tie break, we have a challenge screen for that, I believe. The tie break screen. Indeed, we do. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. So is it uh, Wild Chicks versus Genesis? Is that the idea? I think so. So wild chicks, I'm, I'm assuming that's like the little chickens with knives and pitchforks, right? I'd have to imagine. <laughs> I, we have to have their, uh, their team logo for next week. <laughs> I 
Oh gosh, now you're gonna make them draw that. Now you're gonna make them draw it. Put that in Photoshop <laughs> or something. Oh god. Alrighty, so we have the. There we go. So for All right, so. round one of the of the tiebreaker, Wild Chicks and Genesis. Yes. Let's get them in here. Just kind of like a uh, a lower bracket. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, oh my gosh, it God, is. God, Romero, what have you found? <laughs> uh, this is... <geez>. I. <laughs> we'll save that one for later. They I'm submitted like... it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll save... Sense. I'll save that one for, uh, for the actual event when we can do the big reveal. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Just say that it's beautiful. I'll leave it at that. Awesome. <laughs> oh no. How much can a team pay to get swapped around to the uh, team one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is that that this is this is how it goes. So this is now a round robin. Uh, yes, I so. I, we, we have three players. I, I, or three teams. So everyone fights each other. It's technically a round robin, even if it's a, even if that's a complicated way of describing three players facing off. We will get back to continuing the uh, the rest of the qualifier after these next few matches. Oh yes. Oh yes. We need a new map as well. Not a this again. <laughs> OBS, why do you do this? If only, if only. Uh, where are the other players? Uh, I suppose, if necessary, we can uh, do a different do round do the round two and the round one if the players for this round have been um, have stepped away for a moment. Uh, we do have the other matches in here will be uh, Ethan's coaches versus the wild, the wild chicks again uh, but then we also have Genesis yes so if need be we could do uh, Genesis and Ethan's coaches I think Wild Chicks did just play, so they may have stepped out a bit to take a break, like uh, rush trip and so forth, so we can yes. skip uh, the round order. Doesn't really make a difference in round robin. Yes. True. Uh, if we want to try to get Eaton's coaches in here, oh, or at right. least put them on notice, say, hey, it's explosion time. We can do Genesis versus Eaton's coaches next. Yes. Uh, if we do do that, uh, Genesis will be on team one, I believe. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's right. Each person has their uh, their team at. That's that's a good idea. All right. All right, so they are. All right, so we've got that one coming up next. Yep. 
we'll have Salzburg and Stefan going up against uh, Lavin and Full Felicis. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Should be a nice tiebreaker match. And, and so the winner of the tiebreakers, they go on to... Or is this just deciding for the seating? This is for deciding the, for the seating. Okay. okay. It is separate from the qualifiers bracket. Uh, we just have one extra, one extra slot, and we have three three teams vying for it. Yes, I was I was counting the test dummies as a a team getting into the tournament. Uh, wait, <laughs> that's not reverse. One of these things is not like the other. I'm sorry, I believe there's two slots uh, that three teams are competing for. Uh, yes. Yes. It is only one of these three teams that will not that will not make it. Mm. We have Selworks. Uh, yep, Stefan will be here shortly. Uh, might as well do team one commander ban. Uh, yes, Caverns is the map. Okay. All right, scatter we have shot. Everyone's banning scatter shot this time around. Like we, we, I, I understand the scatter shot buzz saws. They're strong. Very scary. I would think. I, am, I wish we could find. I know uh, Forty Two did a lot of data on the uh, commander bands and the commanders used uh, for the Forts Pro League. I have to I have to find that stuff somewhere. It was very interesting stuff. He is the uh, the spreadsheets man, of course. <laughs> interesting. Right. I like numbers. So a scatter shot and pinch fist band. Looks like we're good to go. It seems so. All good. Uh, yep. Looks like it. We just need you to. Right. Let's do it. Yep, and then we are good. Oh, who went? Somebody's not ready. Rome. There he is. Okay, here we go. There Three, we go. two, one. And we're off. Oh, I'm excited for this one. Um, <laughs> however, team two is not Seep. Because here on the uh, left-hand side, we have team one. It is Labin and Full Felici going with the Architect Commander. A commander that we've mentioned before being an unusual pick, but an exciting one. Facing off against their opponents as the... Spook Commander, we have Salzwerk and Stefan. So the big strength that we saw with Architect last time was Architect's ability to consistently defend against nukes, namely their ability to wood spam and reliably hold off against specifically the unbridled explosions of the warheads and swarm missiles. Yeah, being able to defend against nukes is very nice. Yes, as it's kind of unique in its ability to consistently defend against it. However, I suspect that we are, in, in fact, we can already have it revealed that we are not going to be seeing warheads and nukes this time around. So that doesn't look like it. That particular strength of architect will not come into play here. So I'm curious to see if there is another strength that they can wield not really i mean architect is still good like it's just kind of a good all-around generic commander make thing go fast <laughs> yeah faster build time cheaper wood i mean what's not to love the problem True. that they'll find is that it won't give them an edge in getting to cannon o'clock faster and it won't increase their power 
They won't get the economic advantage that Spook gives by stealing resources. They won't get any potential oh. damage bonuses. Spook doesn't give a direct damage bonus, but it does give you some insight into the weaknesses of the opponents. So you can kind of get an indirect damage bonus that way. Architect offers none of these things other than more consistent rebuilds. And Yes, the interesting interesting thing about playing Architect is you have to really have to hope that your opponent is going for early game weapons as that really does feed your uh, your late game rush. Yes. Which really is a rush because it's just with the active ability it's cannons just place them and they're done. <laughs> there is another it's variant where yes, there is another variant where you have one of your teammates go for early game aggression which can build up your commander energy, give you the active for your second teammates to use and give them a swift a swift heavy weapons rush. Uh, I don't think that's going to help significantly this time, only because the time it took those rockets to come out, the plasma beam and fire beam are going to be done before those before those uh, rockets successfully completely fill up that uh, commander energy meter. True. Although for team team two right now is slightly defended against rockets. Uh, uh, Fully defended <laughs> they get against taken rockets. Out by the first volley. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Uh, that's uh, that's. You know, I don't think it's going the direction Team 1 wants things to go. But Team 2 isn't exactly fast. They're taking it slow. They've got maxed mines. Does Team 1 have maxed mines? Team 1's d just now getting maxed mines. Yeah, Team 1 isn't going full eco. Team 1's going for a more kind of expected style heavy weapons mm -hmm. rush. Whereas Team 2 went full eco first and is just now getting their weapons. Oh, hey, what makes it? Indeed it does. The sniper war up top. Numbers outweigh doored snipers. Sometimes. We have a cannon from team two bottom base here, Sal's work. Uh, top base has a laser. Interesting. Uh, it's slower than, than Lavin here, but uh, Lavin did get those very uh, placed very, very quickly. Indeed. I still question the speed at which they got the lasers for Team 1. It does mitigate most of the benefit of Architect if, you don't, if you're going for your teammate to do, to do the early game pressure. But of course, of course this does mean they have the, the lasers out earlier at, at a more standard cannon o'clock timing. And it's going to deal Very damage. Oh. This could be potentially lethal damage. Using the active, but it doesn't matter. Ooh, very nice shot. Player eliminated. GG. So, well, it. at least GG for him. Yes. <laughs> what a shot. Uh, didn't even follow up with the... Uh, the laser wasn't even on point with the fire beam, but it still did enough damage to uh, collapse. Yeah, this is... I don't see what... Stefan can do. Uh, he's got the, pl the fire beam, plaza beam, but it's just so slow. It's not a standard cannon o'clock timing. Mm. He's got some anti-air oh. and has successfully... Those rockets have done nothing. Not much. Like, one landed over the course of the entire game. Like, just half of a ball. 10%. Yes, 10%. 10 commander of charge. <laughs> oh, what a slice. A beautiful slice. Just 100 taking it. percent of, of uh, Team 2's weapons have been eliminated there. Mm hmm. And that Jeez. leaves Team 2 with nothing. No weapons but a sniper. And apparently the ability to be invulnerable to rockets. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, the smoke. <laughs> I saw the first shot happen. I was like, oh, he's going to have to keep doing that. He's going to do that one again, and indeed he did. Winning the sniper duels, actually, Team 1 doing well with their snipers and taking that map uh -oh. control, but map control does not help you against laser beams, and laser beams hurt a lot. The gunner's getting swung all around when they're trying to fire. <laughs> oh. 
second rocket makes contact. <laughs> Always trying. Hey! The commander ability is active for Architect now. Uh, that means uh, team t team they're one. nothing builds faster. Yeah, they're nothing builds faster. They already have their weapons in play. Uh, team one True. did use the commander ability to get the munitions plants, which will enable their lower base to get the cannon. Yes. Additionally, a swarm missile was placed up top and built in that entire active ability uh, very quickly. So we will start to see swarms come out just to apply pressure to the already uh, the already overwhelmed AA. Yes. I wonder if he's go just going to. No, surely he keeps it as a swarm missile. You know, just as a uh, just as a safety measure against against energy shields and the mm. ability to overwhelm AA a little bit stronger, a little bit harder. True. He did build an upgrade center, which is now complete. Might upgrade it. Yep, there it is. All right. Well, uh, I guess they're going to be using the nuke instead and trying to use the shotgun. Yeah, with, that, with having the shotgun, it really makes uh, swarms, or needing swarms to distract AA a little bit less uh, important because there's no AA to begin with. Yeah, so the uh, yeah. the rockets finally landed and shredded every machine gunner on Team 2. So that hurt a lot. Oh, yeah. Safan, despite having the active ability for Spook on, is struggling for eco. Uh, and it would be hard not to be, that's for sure. Considering the damage he sustained. Oh, yeah. I'm just waiting for oh. the uh, the kill shot. The laser finished? <sighs> oh... Does he get? Did he get the doorstep? Nope. No. Hit too low. Oh, there it goes. Well, you got the count. Nice you got the door snipe. Here. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's one plasma laser removed from Team One. Stefan putting on a valiant, putting on a valiant effort here, keeping himself alive, actually dealing damage, managing to rebuild his laser beam after having lost it. He's, uh, he's holding on. This is impressive. Hopefully he's here with the the extra storage structure. or uh, Maybe? Yep, a howitzer. There it is. There That's a nice shot. Is. That was a beautiful shot. Oh, there's shot. the active. That howitzer will be done in uh, a few seconds. <laughs> yeah. This is what I... This is a very good element of Architect. This oh is gosh. probably the strongest element of Architect. Just so the quick, pick, the tech switching potential. I think he's gonna have to replace his turbine above that howitzer to, to actually make this shot. Additionally, all the weapons there are single doored. Um, a laser could chop right through it and possibly collapse that tower. Uh, oh yeah. Howitzer collapsing in the core is not a good thing. Uh, typically, results in bad health. But you know. Oh, yeah. This is Oof. bad. Survives. Oh, there goes a sniper. Not the laser, but... Another slice important. loses a sniper. That actually isn't even that big of a repair bill. Like, that did mm. far less damage than I expected it to. Yeah. Additionally, they didn't use the nuke in combo, though, so... Uh, the nuke could do more damage. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it <laughs> snakes underneath, and the laser goes away. Okay. Well, on well, the bright side here, the oh, the laser didn't explode in the base, but it won't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone. He's... Well done, Team One. <laughs> Very well done, Team One. <laughs> yes, I can. I need I need someone to break this curse by the <laughs> end. I will be deeply unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I expect a lot of Team One memes uh, if that does happen. Oh, it's it it's every time yeah. with this, every time. Is with that this. Every, it's, always Team One? Yeah, it seems like it. Uh, we we the the, the running energy. the running theory is that because yeah. most players will practice on Team One, just having to uh, just the different perspective is yeah, it throws you off a little bit. Too. Yeah. And it, sometimes people will practice on team two, and you definitely should practice on team two because of reasons like this. But like mechanically, there's 
with the exception of a couple maps everything is symmetrical so there's like there's no benefit or to there's actually no benefit to being on team one with the rare exception of a couple maps where there's a tiny benefit like you can fit one extra turbine behind your base or you have a slightly better angle over a piece over the center piece of terrain and uh, what is it called the, the hill fort not hill fort. is it hill fort i forget the name of that the one we don't play um but aside from hill fort. aside from like those specific instances there is just no there is no difference between team one or team two but team one just seems to win every time uh all right, it looks like Wild Chicks has been forced to uh, withdraw. They are, have been unavailable and have not checked in, so they will be forfeiting their two matches in this tiebreaker round, meaning that Genesis and Eaton's coaches will be moving along. Hmm. All right, so with that, uh, we have wrapped up our... We have wrapped up a little round robin with one player being removed and two slots available for the for these three players to fight for. Uh, well, we have two victors already by virtue of one team dropping out. So congratulations. Congratulations, Eaton's coaches and Genesis on your slots in next week's tournament. Yes. So you will see more of them later on. Even though they're no longer in the qualifier tournament. Yes. Knocked out of the qualifier tournaments, but proceeding yes. to the tournament, but proceeding to the main event. Mm. Additionally, because of the target dummy team, uh, unfortunately not winning by uh, by sheer luck, uh, I, I had my money on them. Uh, Danky Merkel moves on to the finals and fills at least one position uh, into the qualifying for next week. Yes. So I believe Danky Merkel is also uh, has a spot. All right. So our next match will be Copium versus the Toxic Triarts. Yes. <laughs> Let's see, it's Copium on Team One, Toxic Triarts Team Two. Uh, Looks like it at the ah one more player in. I see. Oh gosh, Sinclair, I see you have found the pun masters. Yeah, yeah. Um I have. <laughs> yes. Um I uh I did a laughing emote. Um they'll never know because I was muted if I laughed or not, so that'll be the mystery. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, that's me. I'm the f I am Forts. I am Forts in chat. That's me. I am the embodiment of Forts. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think someone was saying, "Oh, it'd be nice if she was in chat." I'm like, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> I've been chatting away. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, it's me. Team Two Curse still running because dropout. Oh no. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, both of these players. Or both of these teams have already claimed a victory on team one but one of them will be on team two so Very we'll true. see if that is the difference yeah, this time okay. around it looks like we're ga we're going through our bands right now i just want to be sure they made uh, they saw <laughs> yes We should be. I'm excited for this one. This one is. This one is another stacked lobby match. Oh yeah. I have no idea I'm if it's not... going to be super one-sided or it's going to go to the wire. I uh, I feel bad for Noah. He um he did his 24-hour stream yesterday, so he was I believe up for like 40 hours straight. <laughs> Whoa. And uh, and he got like eight hours of sleep before this tournament. Yeah, that's. You know, that he did that to himself. Yes, mm -hmm. that was all on him. I was realizing this morning, I was like, oh, this is a bad idea. Yes. 
It takes more than eight hours of sleep to recover from 24 hours of not sleep. Oh yeah. It takes I'm sure after three this days. Is over, he'll be uh, he'll be out. <laughs> takes three days of full sleep. Jeez. I think the longest stream I've ever done is 12 hours, and I was out. Oh yeah, Five I can imagine. Yeah. All right. Looks like we have commander bands done. Uh, both Pinch and Spook have been banned. So, you know what that means? Oh yeah. It's time. It's scatter shot time. Or <laughs> seep. Oh man. <laughs> or I, both. I want to see it. I want to see it so bad. <laughs> All right. Looks like we are good to go here. Cool. All right. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's do this. It's a scattershot mirror match, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Here on the yeah. left-hand side, we have Team Copium with Noah and Mech70 facing off against their opponents. Also, the scattershot, it's Novikas, Poofy, and Bowser. Happy Bob noises. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of people talk about the bonus projectiles for scattershot. And most of the time, that's in reference to the bonus buzzsaw that you get when using the buzzsaw weapon for, as scattershot. For me, it's all about the sniper. You get those double-tap snipers, which means fire beams, plasma lasers, uh, the laser beams, they, they just explode. Even cannons can go from being not particularly vulnerable to suddenly in the danger zone when dealing with scattershot snipers because cannons require three sniper shots to eliminate but when you only have one one sniper uh, the cycle time off of the reload time like the refire time for the sniper is so long that a cannon is never actually vulnerable but with the double shot snipers, there is a potential to get two full volleys in against a cannon, which turns into four bullets, which is enough to bring down a cannon. Yeah, a lot of things that typically aren't vulnerable to snipers become uh, very scary to have. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, I get excited whenever I have an opportunity to double shot snipers. It's like turbines. <laughs> yes. Jeez, during the FPL matches when we went when we went scatter shot, it was just turbines would just be gone. <laughs> no more turbines. You don't get to have energy. I'm surprised. I'm sure both well. surprised and not surprised to see the amount of uh, buzz saws. But there's only one buzz saw. But like everyone knows, there's scatter shot here, so you have to have metal, and therefore no reason to build buzz saws. But buzz saws so strong though. <clears throat> yeah, they're definitely very scary. Oh, interesting. Knafiki's here going for the swarms, which is not typically what we see with this commander. No. Um, additionally, he does have the the uh, munitions plant, so he will be probably going 20 mils uh, later on down the road. But Yes, I imagine this is mostly just for applying early pressure. Force an overreaction out of their opponents, which we may yes. see possible i still every time i see the the tech placed in front i i just i have opinions like it's clearly not objectively bad but i have opinions and most of them are not uh oh oh it oh. from below and there it goes away it goes the cannon falls time for the intense music four minutes in <laughs> so that's the power of the buzzsaw buzzsaw sniper does success uh, does successfully crazy. defend against the swarm missile with the additional additional pressure yes the uh the dual uh the dual firing sh uh snipers connect as a decent aa sometimes too <laughs> it's uh it's surprising <laughs> I mean, if you can snipe nukes. Very true. 
it works really well. Oh, no, and not playing around this time. Uh, putting the metal right in front of the... Right in front of the, uh, the, the 3 mil. The best part about it, it's still vulnerable to buzz saws. Yeah, if he can get under it with the with the buzzsaw. Uh -huh. Exactly. Do some nice damage. Although, well, Noah's worrying about buzzsaws. Team two has some twenty mils already up and running. Both player, both teams have the uh, the active ability ready. Uh, this is terrifying. <laughs> yeah, team two is the first to fire. Oh, jeez. Commander ability activates, well. condenses those shots. And away goes the 20 mil again for Team 1. Uh, team 1 replies in kind. But with only a single 20 mil, that's not going to be significant damage. Hmm. Noah is currently the punching bag and is taking a lot of heat from it. Losing his weapons is going to set Team 1 behind. Uh, and team 2 getting their second, second uh, 20 mil up. Almost. Almost done. Incoming swarms. I'm just targeting the active. Team 2 has the active again, but with this time with 220 mils, this one could hurt. Looks like he's aiming for the top. Oh, going for the weapons. Oh, does he nail it? The second it? one, does he hit? Oh! oh not quite. A bit low. A little bit low. If he had managed to nail that shot, could have eliminated one, if not both, of those 20 mils for Team 2, and that would have significantly reduced Team 2's actual damage or ability to do anything here. Oh yeah. Now with those missed shots, it does charge Team 2's active ability, which gives them the the, uh, the firepower to retaliate. Indeed. Jeez. Not much damage. Again, with the trading shots, another active ability. Uh, team 1 should be zeroed in, however. He oh isn't. no. Bit low. One was a bit low, one was a bit high. I'll have to dial those in if he really wants to kill the 20 mils. Oh, the joy of scattershot. Here comes the swarm missile again. Poor Noah. Just the punching bag. Yes. It's more like the tickling bag at this point. <laughs> uh, those swarms. Uh oh, never mind. <laughs> Are there more? Second shot. Yeah, there they are. There it is. All oh, three geez. 20s. Noah Ooh. getting bullied. Focused nice. down by Poofy and Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> Noah loses his 20 mil again. Mm. Mech returns to take a vengeance. Gets the sniper. It's nice. Going for his turbines, it seems. They're trying to get an angle on the core. Either way, not doing much in the way of damage. Hmm. I like Kanafiki's defense here. All of the sandbags everywhere, it really minimizes the damage that uh, those uh, focused 20 mils can do. Sandbags are good. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I look forward to seeing how this is going to continue. This is just a, it's just, just a slap contest at this point. Uh oh. Oh, oh, the door snipes. Oh. Does it drop it? It doesn't. He had a double grip. He had a cross brist. Oh no. It does, however, detonate. Ah. Uh, yes. Very unfortunate. He did cross Team brace. Has... Hmm. But it didn't matter. The door snipe took it out, anyways. Team 1 is really just disarmed here. Noah has a 20 mil, but we've seen how they have survived in the past. Uh, not. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I think Noah is going to be, um, Noah is going to be the target again, I think. Yes, enemy of the state, number one. Just a light dusting to build up the commander ability. Oh. Swarm missile potentially to finish off the commander charge. I don't know if it'll be enough, but we'll have to see. Oh, oh just so close, 97%. I always feel bad about using 20 mils when we could just barely have the active. It feels so wasteful. Yes. Maybe he'll but fire the swarms again. Here. Or snipe something. <laughs> or just take a hit from Noah's 20. Hey, Noah might be able to fire his, his weapon once. True. That would, that would probably feel good. 
Yeah, here, he might go for a door snipe, just to try to... Oh, he has to. Oh? Oh, a bit low. Doesn't make it. Oh, well. Uh, luckily for Team 1, those swarms are still swarms. Um, if they were upgraded to nukes, they really would need to get some, some AA out, which uh, is target number 1 by regular 20 mils. Yes, I would I would personally leave them as swarms nonetheless, just because of the uh, energy shields. Energy shields still reflect 20 mils without taking damage, at least not meaningful damage. True. Oh, Additionally, gotta... they can take out portals, but I don't think we're going to be seeing any of those. Yeah, portals are not really something we see in, competitive, in the competitive environment. Very true. There oh. it goes. <gasps> what an angle. Oh... Straight to the core. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so much happening. Wait, is this team two doing well? <laughs> it <laughs> Wait, is. Go back, go back. <laughs> <laughs> Say it isn't so. Team oh no, two. I'm having internet connection issues. Ah. <laughs> 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 it's a restart. <laughs> uh, no, I forgot his stability team. again. Well, I mean, I don't <sighs> think that would have saved him. Active again, there it is. Alright, uh, door uh -oh. snipe. Door snipe oh, again. No. Oh, I don't know no. if you repaired it in time. It's gonna be close. <laughs> Alright, he so did painful to look at. He did repair it in time. He keeps his 20 mil this time. But yikes. Oh, still is the active if he fires now. Yep, there it is. That's a just doing some a lot of chunky damage. damage. Oh yeah. Firing straight at the doors is usually the best idea. Uh, it really slows down the opponent. Uh, he's trying Although to add some sandbags <laughs> just to keep himself alive here. I don't think it's going to be enough. Jeez. The shield is put in work. There it is. Ooh. Yeah. Losing the sniper in the process. Well, at least he's got another cannon building, in but... That's one cannon Oops. versus four cannons, and soon to be more. Yeah. Uh, there's the upgrade center from uh, Kanafikis there to upgrade the swarms into a nuke. Probably a good time to do that. Yeah, definitely. At this point, just raw damage is what you're looking for. Yep. And additionally, uh, Team 2 is probably just going to be going for center mass here, going straight for the core. Yeah. No need to get cheeky with shield. it. Just, uh, you have overwhelming firepower. Burn him to the ground. I'm actually kind of surprised to see to see so few energy energy shields. He's got plenty of energy for it. Yeah, probably knowing that they have the swarm just kind of uh, is, acts as a nuclear deterrent. That's that is fair. Oh god. Oh no. Unfortunate timing for the firing. It's just so many. Oh, wow. Jeez. Yeah, this, I would absolutely 100% of the time put an energy shield in front of that. Even if it's vulnerable to a swarm, just have it yeah. there and disable it. You do the energy shield door trick because you cannot afford to re be replacing two, three doors at a time. That was just instant, instant. <laughs> he put the sniper down and he was sitting there waiting for something to happen. It's an AI match. Like, poofy. Oh, the 20 mil in the back, getting hit. Uh, the cladding, you can see there are holes in it, so if Team 2 is uh, looking very closely, they can see that there is a 20 mil back there. Although, they might not know yet. Oh, we have a howitzer down by Bowser. You know, the uh, howitzer is a bit of an escalation. Just really trying to have a final blow if they need it. It's uh, it's always a good idea to keep expanding. Uh, even if you are winning, it's just a, a good idea to just keep going because anything could happen. Oh, yeah. Win ahead, get just further ahead. Yes. Ooh, there we go. I was waiting to see more Ooh. sniper. Sniper action. We That's actually, well. yeah, we had a counter snipe. Poofy lost his first 20.
rich people problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, alas, 60 seconds left in the match before it goes to the timer. When the timer expires, it will be Team 2 with the victory. Unless Mech can actually get a full elimination here. That was probably his best chance at getting it. That's like as far as he can get. Yeah, that was a beautiful I shot. I don't think there's anything more he could possibly have done there. Mm. That howitzer is coming online. The nuke is up. It's not looking good for Team 1 here. But he has held down the fort, pun intended, very well. Like his only like oh jeez, <laughs> what could he do? But what could he do? But door snipe. Yeah. Other than that, uh, poor That's howitzer it. doesn't get to fire. Team two with the victory. Wow. Wow. Breaking <laughs> the Amazing. curse. The curse is broken. Finally. Congratulations, team two. You broke the curse. You fought through it all, going yeah. up against, going into the finals with that. Yeah. Yes. It was a great win. Um, I believe that's, that uh, engraves their spot as the runner-up to the top qualifying, or at least um, a chance to. But they are now top two for qualifying for the next tournament. Very well played. <clears throat> Alrighty, so Toxic Tryhards will be Team 2 and Danky Merkel will be Team 1. Just need to get Danky Merkel in here and then we will have our final match to determine the number one seed or the number one uh, qualifier. I'm very happy that we at least got to see one match with uh, Scattershot. Yes. And that, for the record, is why Scattershot tends to get banned. <laughs> Sniper's too very strong. Scary. Interestingly enough, oh, yeah. it isn't the... It isn't the... Um, it isn't the cannons, the 20 mils, out of the reason why Scattershot is so strong. Like, it's nice. It's the, <clears throat> But it's the double shot snipers, and it's the buzz saws. It's those, it's those supporting weapons that are just so much oh, yeah. more powerful. Yeah, those extra shot buzz saws really kind of eliminate buzz or uh, eliminate sandbags, which are very good at defending, typically. Um, but with that extra shot, it just kind of just chunks right through. Doesn't care. Very good at doing it. Let's see. Indeed. Uh, oh. We have. Team one is Danky Merkel. Uh, yep. All right, there it is. All right. The finals are one hundred percent German. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, that's <laughs> true. <clears throat> Let's see. Teams are correct, and okay. we have both. Both teams have banned commanders, uh, Scattershot and Spook, which leaves Pinchfist up. Mm -hmm. All I right. Have an inkling. I mean, I don't think Pinchfist does as well on uh, on balls. I think we're more likely to see Seep. That's fair. Oh, that's true. He is. He is still available for the choosing. This is also another good map for for um, Architect. Mm. Buster as well with the uh, expansions. Indeed. Okay, right. I guess we're ready. We are indeed. I think so. For the final match. Indeed. Three, the qualifiers. Two, one. Let's go.
Oh, shoot. Alrighty. And we're off. So here on the left-hand side, we have Team Ambrulo and Finn. As Phantom. That oh, one boy. I didn't see coming. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Two times. Two times in this tournament. I want to see how they handle this differently than the previous uh, showing of Phantom. But he, they're facing off against their opponents, Nufigiz Privy and Bowser. As the architect commander, I'm th pretty certain, if, if I'm a betting man, I would say they chose architect as a counterpick against Seep, expecting their opponents to go Seep. Um, they're in for a surprise, and I hope that surprise involves them involves team one doing phantom things pretending to go swarm missiles and instead hitting them with laser beams mm -hmm. i like please i need this in my life like that would be wild and probably the best showing of phantom mind games to date if that were to happen very true i mean even with the last showing of fire uh, or a uh, of Phantom here, that was not bad with the uh, the moving of the cannons and the magnum. Beam. Yes. Uh, even with the flak as well, it was uh, a very good ex or, uh, kind of an expose of of Phantom and her strengths and sometimes weaknesses. Looks like Team One is expanding to the lower ball. Hmm. Probably going to be a place for cannons. I imagine so, uh, especially considering it's easy to angle this. You kind of have to angle it if you're going to put them there that far down. You have to get those cannons to aim upward at your opponents. Very but, true. But now the question, I, I still don't. Yeah, we, We're seeing heavy weapons out of Team 1. Everyone has just agreed not to go swarm missiles, it would seem. Which is just weird, especially on balls. That's like yeah. one of the bigger one of the bigger swarm missile maps. Yeah, just the uh, the multitude of space uh really just breeds <laughs> breeds um swarms. You've got so much space and especially the the closer base, the lower bases are close enough that you can do. It's difficult to defend against the swarms, and if you're a lower base going for swarms, the swarms come from below, which is just even harder to deal with. Oh yeah. Really. Additionally, the uh, it's easy to protect turbines uh, behind the balls. Yes. It's, uh, another another factor into why going early game shenanigans is easier. Uh, we're not even seeing mind games out of the phantom team. Uh, what's happening? Yeah, it looks like they're just utilizing the uh, space to build. It uh, looks like a magda beam <laughs> again. Oh, no. And a cannon. Are they going to do the exact same thing as the other team? The, the... I think they might, but probably with more cannons, as you do need more cannons to do uh, to do that successfully with. More Two cannons. Two would be more ideal, but three would be chef's kiss. Oh. Yeah, I think that's what's. I think that's what's going to happen. It's just going to be more cannons and p possibly a bit better coordinated. Although it was very well coordinated with the previous showing as well. Yeah. Oh well, Ooh, there nice shot. goes. Yeah, there goes the workshop tech, and mm. a significant amount of his income. That hurts a lot. Uh, both saw strong. <laughs> Surprised we haven't seen more of that already. <sighs> When you expand oh. a lot, you tend to get buzzsawed. Hmm. I'm guessing that's a position where the magnum will get placed uh, once it's completed and ready to fire. Just firing at it now just to see if there's anything in there. I'm genuinely wondering what they're going to target with that, with the magnum beam combo. I mean, on a map like this where you have to fortify your top and your front, the magnum beam combo really doesn't do all that much. But Yeah, I mean realistically here the one space 
Though uh, Bowser's pretty well protected from above and below, um, so he's kind of out of the question for the Magnum Cannons. But top base, uh, Kanafugi's lower area is uh, weak to it, and additionally above his cannons would be another key place to uh, aim those. But they don't really know what's in there and how well defended it is. So right. Um, but those are probably the two most most vulnerable places on yes. Team Two. That is exactly correct, and I'm curious to see if those locations will get tar targeted. Bowser is just not vulnerable to much of, or any of this. Uh, Bowser can have his base completely destroyed by a pair of buzzsaws right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I was just pointing out the, uh, the flashing brace down there. Downside of bottom base connecting a lot to the bottom ball is if the bottom ball gets destroyed, then it's, uh, it's pretty rough. Having a connection there doesn't really work. Oh, both cannons being moved. The Magnum is ready. Where are they going to fire? Oh! There is your showing. <laughs> what a shot. Beautiful. <laughs> and Magnum that's what we're clean. here for. Yep. Well played. And All just like the, that. The cloak active. <laughs> yep. They cloaked their base, fired everything, and moved it before it uncloaked. That awesome. is pinnacle phantom teamwork right there yeah that was awesome what a shot and the nice thing about that is beforehand uh team two really didn't know what team one was going there they had no uh because the weapons are invisible so they couldn't see what uh what team one was doing the only thing team two knew what was going on was was it was heavy weapons of a kind and that's it True. so team one is cloaked again oh. This time it looks like they're not going to really do much with the fire with the Magna Beam. They're just going to hit. Because I don't think they... I think they realize there's no damage they can really do there. Just fire. The remnants of Kanafuki's base burns to the ground. Or I guess the Abyss. Yeah. Looks like Bowser's just going to keep tickling some forts. <laughs> I mean, what else could he do? He's got swarms, which is nice. Mm. I think... I think Team 1 has discovered the vulnerability they want to attack. And I don't think it involves the Magna Beam. Mm. I think they're going to try with the Magna Beam anyways, but I think it doesn't actually involve the Magna Beam. Mm. Looks like a regular laser is being prepared... Uh, by Amberillo here, just gonna be do, used to uh, deal just regular damage. Oh yeah, yeah. Ooh. They they definitely know all they have to do is just forward, just add damage to the front, mm. and then focus. For, yep, they're hitting the weak spot. They disconnect there, yep. everything falls. Even if they disconnect really fully anything along along that foundation above the uh, above the center mass. It's just yeah, the, uh, it's all gonna come. There's a lot right of down. weight, a lot of weight resting on there. Oh, <laughs> the flex. A little bit of friendly fire. Never hurt anyone. Just sniping now, just to get rid of any uh, exposed buzz saws. It's a good idea. There is an oh, interesting. There we go. That that angled piece of metal is doing doing good work. There is an interesting economic advantage to going Phantom here. Uh, because they're only firing during their cloak, they never have to worry about really dooring their weapons. They oh, just ex mm. leave them exposed, fire everything, and move them back before the cloak expires. So the enemies never have an opportunity to know where the shots are coming from. Oh, there goes the launcher cancelling the other two launchers down below. What a play. I didn't see that, that one well coming. Oh, that was really oh, neat, yeah. wasn't it? I figured the swarm missile would explode. I didn't expect it to disconnect the other two. That might have just been like a happy accident there. Hmm. But still, that was a, uh, was good. I'm waiting. I think team one is ready. 
they're just trying to stabilize and make sure they have make sure they have the uh proper timing and everything they need in order to nail all their shots in in coordination cuz normally they would just be firing their weapons because they're kind of reliant on firing during their phantom active I think they're waiting until they're like fully ready so they don't risk their weapons. There yeah, there they go. There is a howitzer being placed on a, on a Finn's base up here. Oh, those triple cannons. There we go. Oh, jeez. It With hits, the laser. but it isn't enough. And all the cannons go away. Additionally, oh. with phantoms being able to move stuff on maps where, which are quite large like this, um, if you don't have an angle in some place, you can just go, eh, yoink, and just scooch it over. Yes. Very helpful. Uh, you really can't not fire everywhere. <laughs> it's a weird way of saying it, but I think it's true. Hmm. There are no angles that are unavailable. Surely they just got like, to me, to me, this just looks, like, I've done this to people almost every time I see this. Oh. So for me, it's like an immediate reaction. I see what Bowser think, does here. I get three I, buzz saws. Yeah. I just chew through that. It but, looks like the howitzer's being handed off from, uh, from Finn to Ambrillo here. Yep, oh. there it is. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that is, that's something I've not seen before. Right, like, surely they know that's just thick wood now, right? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. That's what's oh, going on here. the laser sounds so good. Mm -hmm. Did he give it back? Are they giving it? Is he giving it back? I think he might be. He's disconnected They might just from keep it, it there. Uh, it's currently not reloading. Well, it's disconnected in neutral, so. Yeah. Uh, I think someone has to connect to it. Okay. Like that, that howitzer it needs to be reloaded so it can fire again. Ooh. That was a nice disconnect. Very nice disconnect. Disabling the anti air for a significant period of time. Mm. Allowing some damage to be done. Okay, yeah, they. He did give it back. It has been reconnected to its original owner. Yeah, the funny thing about howitzers is they really still don't even need direct line of sight, so they can go really wherever they need to. Oh, what? Oh, Good timing. <laughs> that was a nice shot. And away goes the upgrade center. No more nukes. But I think Bowser uh, was kind of done with the upgrade center at, those, at the two nuke point. Uh, still wants a swarm, just in case. Yes. Oh, dual nukes. I mean, if those dual nukes do get through to Amber Low, that could be a real problem for him. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I think Ambrulo is going to react to those dual nukes by adding enough defenses. Um, mm. Or not? I don't know. Those, those dual nukes really do pose a, pose a serious threat if they yeah. can get under the base. Oh, okay. Or that works. Uh, manual anti air solves the problem once again. Oh, yeah. Jeez. He really doesn't want to lose connection to that lower ball. <laughs> uh, well, you know, Buzz saw strong. He did it anyways. <laughs> oh, gosh. The deformation oh, is have, real. We have it ready. Oh! Uh, and in style. Jeez. <laughs> oh, they had to try so hard to make that work. I'm so happy they did, though. Yes. Watch that replay. That's just oh, yeah. yeah. I'm very oh, happy we got to see gosh. many cannons in this. <laughs> that was absolutely amazing. So I'm going to close out the lobby. That way I can go watch it in replay because that was beautiful. Sure. So I need to see those again. Very, very well played to <laughs> Finn and Amrulo. That was absolutely oh. Amazing. Let's well check played. out that first shot here. Oh, 
the first one. Oh yeah, the first one was great too. Yeah, I have the stream up, so I had a nice little replay uh, mm -hmm. of it. It was great. It's just like you can't even zoom it. It's just so good. And this is how you actually do this strategy. Yes, it's just a, a bit of a scaled up version of what it was last time. Mm hmm. Two cannons straight to the core from above. Magna Beam memes. Team One takes it again. Yes. Only one, I think one game in the entire tournament breaking the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Oof. And to think wow. they held on cool. for that long. I mean, that's a. I mean, I guess that's the joy of architect bases. They are thick and chunky. What a great game to finish it. Oh, yes. This is very yeah. true. And. Oof. The Magda Beam sound, it goes infinitely. Yeah. It just broke through everything and penetrated all the way to the core. Yeah, it, it curved wow. around the sandbags just perfectly. That's awesome. Well played. Oh, yeah. Very, very it well played. Very well. It definitely was pivotal on uh, killing the top base first. Additionally, his weapons. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the conclusion of our qualifier here this week. We have those who have proceeded, those who have been weeded out. We'll have to come back next time because next week, all of these players will be moving on to the official 2v2 deathmatch tournament. February yes. 26 at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard. That's my time zone. Make sure to check the Steam announcements page for all the details yourselves and you can see the time there and have that converted into your time zone so you guys know but we will be here same time same channel and i look forward to seeing these same players again in what is going to be some of the best forts matches we have ha ever had oh, yeah. indeed congrats to the qualifiers yes, yes big congrats <laughs> Big congratulations, and I want to say a big thank you to Nosehead, Baburetto, Knight Sinclair, and Romero Lagas coming and joining us in this call today. Is there anything else yes. you guys want to say? Thanks. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to everybody here uh, behind the scenes uh, running the tournament. As usual, you know, Rome and all of our moderators, and your moderators, and <laughs> all the huge team it takes to make these things run smoothly and uh yeah very excited looking forward to next week for the finals oh, yeah, yeah definitely excellent and one more shout out to Salzwerk and geiger hosting the german community for those looking for the uh the german tongue uh i believe mm. i i should as i think we also had at some point a french streamer who is not here today but alas i think that is all for us today yep. yes well congratulations Indeed. and everyone uh everyone who played and everyone who came out thank you for playing and thank you for watching big shout out to the competitors all right guys that will be it for me and i'll see you guys next week yep. see yep. ya all right chat for you guys here just for me uh, just for the incursion live streams we will i will be taking a quick food break here i've got to go grab myself some dinner i will be returning tonight with planet side for our outfits weekly ops but for now have a good one everyone and i'll see you guys later also for twitch chat we, we're gonna do a raid i think everyone in the forts community is shutting down right now uh, I can actually check out Geiger and looks like he's doing some experimentation stuff. 
Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go raid a friend of ours real quick, and I'll I'll go live again in an hour or so uh, after getting food. But for now, have a good one, everyone, and I'll see you guys later.